and we are called to order. Let's do a roll call of council members that are present, and then we'll get started with the budget reviews. Council members, please indicate by voice that you're present as I call the roll. Uh, council member Deckard. Here. Council member Hawk. Yes, here. Council, council member Iverson. Here. Council member McKim. Here. Council member Munson. Here. Council member Wilkes. Here. All right, we're all here, so let's get started. I do have one quick amendment to request for the agenda tonight. It was discovered that uh, one of the funds we need to review tonight was not on the agenda. I'll move to amend the agenda to include item number eight under the uh, Technical Services Department Fund 1170-0106, Public Safety Lit. Second. Okay, any questions, discussion? All right, seeing none, uh, Ms. Miller will do a roll call vote to amend the agenda. Councillor McKim? Yes. Councillor Wilkes? Yes. Councillor Hawk? Yes. Councillor Iverson? Yes. Councillor Deckard? Yes. Councillor Spoonmore? Yes. Councillor Munson? Yes. Motion passed unanimously. Okay, we're all set on the agenda. So here's what we'll be looking at tonight. It's another big night for budgets. Uh, so we'll just kind of uh, settle in here. First up will uh, we'll be the weights and measures, then the building department, uh, veteran affairs, uh, the legal department, the technical services department, emergency management, the highway department, human resources. Then we'll wrap up tonight with the commissioner. So busy schedule ahead of us here. Um, all right, next I'll ask Ms. Schell to give us a quick overview, again, I think this will be really quick, uh, of our current status on the proposed 2022 budget. Ms. Schell, do you have uh, some information to share with Council before we get started? There we go. Oh, you're, you're muted. Sorry. Um, I just want to say we uh, made one change from last night, so uh, which was in the general fund, and um, it was a decrease uh, from the auditor's budget of sixteen thousand one hundred and forty-eight dollars. So we have a new general fund total of thirty-eight eight ninety-eight eight ninety-nine. So uh, it didn't decrease our um, target number by much. So. That's the lot of, where we're at right now. A lot of eights and nines there. <laughs> yes. Okay, any questions? All right, well, we appreciate the update and we'll, uh, we'll keep an ongoing running tab of these uh, that we'll uh, discuss at the beginning of uh, each meeting. We've only got one more budget review meeting tomorrow after this tonight. Okay, so I guess we'll just... Uh, get started now. Uh, yeah, Ms. Ms. Hawk, you have a question. Yes, could you remind folks watching at home and even the department heads that uh, we are not approving the budgets, we are just accepting the budgets uh, with any changes we might make along the way, but right now we're not approving the budgets. Oh, that's correct, yeah. The actual um, public hearing will take place on October 4th, and then we'll have uh, and, and the public will have the opportunity to provide public comment on the proposed budget uh, at that point. And then we'll have first reading on October 18th and then final adoption on October 19th. All of those meetings will take place at 5.30 p.m. Public will have opportunities to uh, comment at uh, all three of those meetings on the 2022 budget. So we are not doing any final approvals here um, in these budget work sessions. It's just to review the budgets, have discussions with our department heads and elected officials about their budgets, and to kind of preliminarily uh, accept them, but with the understanding that these could potentially change. All right. Okay, so we can, uh, we'll just go ahead and get started now with our uh, first department, and that is uh, up first is weights and measures. 
Council, I move to open for discussion and review Fund 1000-0308, General Fund Weights and Measures, with $65,818 in the personnel category, $5,310 in supplies, $2,000 in services, zero in capital, for a total budget of $73,128. Second. All right, and uh, I believe- I would like to interrupt for just a moment. Sure. Um, TSD, do you have the time clock available, please? Ah, there we go. That will help us manage our time for the evening. Thank you, TSD and Michelle. Uh, so uh, now we have uh, Scott Souter from Weights and Measures, who will be uh, presenting this budget to us. Welcome, sir. Good evening. Yeah, um, I, as you can see, I have pretty much kept the budget flat this year. The only changes that has been made is a 14-year bump on salary. But besides that, everything is the same as last year. All right. Keeping it simple. Any questions or discussion on the bu uh, budget for weights and measures? Doesn't look like it. This would be a short and sweet. All right, Ms. Miller, we're ready for a roll call vote to accept it. Claire Duckard? Yes. Councillor Iverson? Yes. Councillor Spoonmore? Yes. Councillor Munson? Yes. Councillor McKim? Yes. Councillor Hawk? Yes. Councillor Wells? Yes. Motion passed unanimously. <clears throat> Thank you. All right. Thank you, sir. Have a good evening. Up next is our building department. I have a question. For yes. Kim. Yes, Council. Uh, yeah, Kim, if you could uh, sh show us their uh, most recent uh, amounts of income uh, for the um, for each of the funds, if if we need to be looking at revenue, I just want to say that in advance, so we don't have to say it every time. Fund balances. I will take care of that as uh, as we go. Right, because that building department, we always like to keep track of revenue coming in there. Got it. Thank you. Okay. Right. Council, I move to open for discussion and review Fund 1000-0312 General Fund Building with $679,217 in personnel. $4,085 in supplies, $39,475 in services, zero in capital, for a total budget of $722,777. Second. All right, and Mr. Gerstbauer uh, is joining us from the building department. Welcome, sir. Thank you. Welcome, everybody. Uh, appreciate you having me on. Um, we have been real busy. As you know, last year we worked all the way through the COVID restrictions, and this year we've continued on very busy. Uh, we're a little ahead of last year in terms of revenue, uh, probably about $55,000 ahead, and we are looking at several other uh, relatively large projects through the fourth quarter of this year, and if those, uh, those come in this year, it should, uh, should help those numbers even more. Uh, we have been busy. If you pay attention to Bloomington, you see a lot of cranes and things happening, and, and uh, our department has been very active. Uh, you know, one of the largest projects we've had to deal with in my department has been the hospital project, and that's uh, due to finish up with our involvement, at least uh, in October. Uh, that has been a truly unique project for us. We really appreciate having been involved in that. That has been uh, interesting because of its complexities. Uh, it also includes the large academic building that parallels 46 as you're going past that project. And uh, it has really been a, uh, a quality project. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of, lot of money in, involved in a project like that. But uh, I, I just want to let you know and the community know that the, uh, the project itself has been top quality. The contractors that are involved in that project have been top quality. 
uh, it's really going to be a, a gem for the community, and I look forward to seeing it in action because it uh, it truly is a, is an interesting and and uh, unique facility. But we have a lot of other things going on, a lot of other apartments, uh, commercial and residential projects going forward. And if you've read the paper, they keep approving new ones. So I'm going to going to guarantee we're going to be busy for at least the next couple of years with uh, with that kind of uh, large project activity and we'll continue to grow in residential units as well I hope uh, uh, into the future so uh, look look looks like we're going to be busy for for quite some time going forward and uh, and I just wanted to let you know that is uh, that we are serving the community very well with a very quality qualified staff and uh, and I think uh, I want to compliment the people that work in the building department because they're doing a heck of a job. The budget itself is very simple. Uh, the, the payroll category is per the request of the county and the rest of the budget remains unchanged. So uh, that is the sum total of my budget. I have uh, answers to any questions you might have. All right, thank you. Uh, let's check and see uh, with council, uh, are there any questions or uh, comments for Mr. Gersbauer's budget. Yes, Ms. Wills. Hi, yes. Um, thank you, Mr. Gersbauer. This is um, great. And I know we've, we've emailed a little bit um, over the past week or so. And you had mentioned that you have a vacancy in your department. And um, I'm wondering if you could just speak to that and and it sounds like you're really, really busy um, and kind of how you're, you're managing with the vacancy and any plans you might have. Uh, thank you. Some time ago, we had a, uh, a uh, employee retire from our department and uh, unfortunately since passed away, but Jim Calvert had been a long time employee with the department. I didn't replace him immediately because we had a lot of things on the horizon, both the COVID restrictions uh, and we had uh, rumors at that time of the Ellettsville uh, creating their own building department and changing our activity level. And, uh, and we just had a lot of open questions. Uh, and so I held off hiring that position. Uh, it is becoming readily apparent that, uh, that we are uh, heading into some more major projects as well. And I need to get somebody else to fill that position. So I'm, I'm uh, starting the process of, uh, of looking for qualified help for that. Uh, I hope to be able to fill that position by the end of this year uh, and then have uh, have time to adequately train them before we come into our busiest season, which will be early spring of next year. Great, thank you. All right, any other questions or uh, comments? Mr. Gersbauer, do you have uh, an awareness of when the, uh, the move will take place with the hospital from the current building to the new facility? We're going level by level, do, giving uh, our final permits, for our occupancy permits for uh, floors at a time or departments at a time in the hospital. Uh, they are going to be uh, continuing to move in equipment and things. They are hoping to do some uh, uh, equipment and training uh, in October, November, and December, and they hope to be uh, moving departments to that building and not being operational by the first of the year. Okay. Uh, so very quickly, it's uh, it's yeah. it's been a long time in coming, but it's all uh, happening very fast. Yeah, that will be a, a huge endeavor for sure. Okay, uh, well, if there's nothing further from council, uh, Ms. Miller, I think we're ready for a roll call vote to accept the building department's general fund budget. Councilor Wilkes? Yes. Councilor Iverson? Yes. Councilor Spoonmore? Yes. Councilor Munson? Yes. Councillor Hawk? Yes. Councillor McKim? You're Councilor muted. McKim? Oh, sorry, yes. Councillor Deckard? Yes. Motion passed unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. And up next is Veterans Affairs. Council, I move to open for discussion and review Fund 1000-0012 General Fund Veterans Office. Personnel with uh, $124,163, supplies for $800, services $6,750, capital zero 
for a total budget of $131,713. Second. All right. And Mr. Steve Miller from the Veteran Affairs Office uh, is joining us to present this budget. Welcome, sir. Thank you. Good afternoon. I have, um, we have, we've been able to maintain a level budget from last year to this year. We had a, an overall bump of $569, and that was just due to longevity, essentially, for one employee. So that is the essence of our budget. Got it. Thank you. Let's see if we have any questions or uh or discussion from council. It doesn't uh, appear so. And I think we're ready uh, for a roll call vote to accept this budget. Councilor Munson? Yes. Councilor McKim? Yes. Councilor Deckard? Yes. Councilor Hawk? Yes. Councilor Spoonmore? Yes. Councilor Iverson? Yes. Councilor Wells? Yes. Motion passed unanimously. Great. Thank you, Mr. Miller. Thank you. And up next is the legal department. Council, I move to open for discussion and review fund 1000-0277, general fund legal with $602,405 in personnel $1,145 in supplies, $43,538 in services, zero in capital for a total budget of $647,088. Um, is that the correct number or did that number change? Sorry, I put that over, um, I put that change over here because it wasn't part of their original request. Okay, all right. We'll need to add that. Okay, second. It's right there. Okay. Because I wanted you guys to officially make that motion to add it. Got it. Okay. And uh, Mr. Dave Schilling is uh, joining us, I believe, from the legal department. He does not appear to be on the call. Okay. Move. Should we can just we just continue it to later? Yeah, yeah that's that's fine. Move, move mm -hmm. we continue this budget. Second. Okay. Any any discussion on Mr. McKim's motion to continue the legal department budget indefinitely? Seeing none, we'll do a roll call vote. Councillor Hawk? Yes. Councillor Deckard? Yes. Councillor Iverson? Yes. Councillor Wilkes? Yes. Councillor McKim? Yes. Councillor Munson? Yes. Councillor Spoonmore? Yes. Motion passed unanimously. Okay, so we'll now move on to uh, item eight, technical services department. Council, I move to open for discussion and review fund 1000-0106, general fund TSD, with $178,976 in personnel, $11,600 in supplies, $230,000 in services, zero in capital, for a total budget of $420,396. Second. Right, we have a motion and a second. Uh, Chief Technology Director uh, Eric Evans is joining us, as well as uh, Angie Purdy, who's our Commissioner's Administrator. Uh, feel free to start whenever you're ready. All right. <clears throat> well, I'll try to keep the momentum going. I don't think any of us expected we would get through so many by 20 after five. Uh, I'd like to start out by thanking my team for another great year. We have faced quite a few crises since the last time I sat in front of you to talk about budgets. And every time 
Without fail, my staff is joined together when needed to form the team required to keep things running smoothly for the county. As a result, I'd like to use my time as many other department and elected officials have to talk briefly about salaries. Now at the outset, I wanna make two things clear. Number one, I'm not advocating for a raise for myself. I'm just not wired that way. I agreed to do this job for a certain price and when the hassle of the gig outweighs the money I'm paid, I'll simply go elsewhere. But it is incumbent upon me as the leader of this team to advocate in the strongest manner uh, for the salaries of my staff. Now, I'm also not gonna suggest that you bring our IT salaries to parity with private sector IT salaries as that's not a realistic expectation. The county has too many mouths to feed and our revenue streams are too precipitously tenuous. But having said all that, I need to make sure that everyone here understands that these last few years of flat cost of living increases have served to greatly increase the disparity in salaries from our public sector IT team when compared to our corporate counterparts. And the wider that gap becomes, the bigger of a problem it is for all of us. Now you understand what that means. It makes it harder to retain talent and it makes it even harder to recruit the talent should someone leave. And we, we desperately need both of those uh, to keep things running smoothly. And we don't have to look further than two weeks ago for two clear examples of the situation that I'm talking about. We all watched as close to 10 years of institutional knowledge walked out the door for a gig that paid $20,000 more than what we could pay him. Now, I don't begrudge that for a second. I don't think you guys do either. These jobs are never gonna pay what they would in a traditional private sector setting. As such, I'd be disappointed if this was the final career stop for any of my younger staff. During that same week that we lost Mr. Egan, we suffered the kind of IT failure that I lose sleep over. A random construction crew cut a random fiber artery that took out most of our IT functions. We couldn't have planned for that, nor could we have prevented it in any reasonable way. But the fact that the team lead who troubleshot that outage has years and years of institutional knowledge of how our network infrastructure is laid out was absolutely vital in the amount of time it took for us to resolve that and get our county government back up and running. As it was, we were able to get back up and running in about half a day. Now, if I were leading a team of new people trying to figure out their way around things, that outage easily could have shut the county down for much more, more than half a day, probably closer to a day and a half by my estimation. Now, in closing, I don't want to belabor the point. I've been through the budget process with you all enough times to know that you've got a great many priorities beyond that of my staff. I only ask that when you do sit down and start talking about uh, trying to rationalize our current salary structure with the WIS report that you remember this presentation. So having said all that, let's move on to my budget, uh, which should go pretty quickly. I'll have you guys out of here by midnight. Uh, I don't think I made any changes. I think it's pretty flat. I don't know that that's, is that, yeah. Uh, I don't think that there are any changes beyond what typically happens when longevity changes. Uh, the majority of our personnel expenses are in the cum cap line, um, which we'll be talking about later with Ms. Purdy. Uh, but in general, the, my general fund budget, we're able to keep that pretty flat. Uh, most of the magic happens uh, under... Angie Purdy's uh, uh, gaze in the Coom cap and in some of the more complicated technology lines. Uh, and I, I would definitely thank her <laughs> for the amount of work she does for that. So having said that, do I have any questions on our general fund budget such as it is? All right, thank you for the presentation. We'll see if there's any questions or comments from council, Mr. McKim. I guess I will just say that I, I uh, really wanna commend 
you and your staff for having had to kind of completely reinvent yourselves in in a virtual world. And, uh, you know, I think the county, the, the management of county meetings in, a, in this virtual world uh, are second to none. I mean, this we really you guys really do a fantastic professional job of uh, of maintaining these and keeping these meetings running, and uh, I really appreciate it. And you know, particularly Michelle has done; you know, she's she's usually our uh, our mo <clears throat> moderator, excuse me. But all of you have done, and she's done a fantastic job. But all of you, I, I congratulate you. Yeah, yeah, Michelle in particular has stepped into this role, something that we didn't envision for her because it didn't exist. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, she stepped up and made it her own and um, has been incredibly valuable beyond what you guys see. Yeah. Mr. Everson. I want to continue the commendations and I have a question. I, I just wanted to, to also thank you for your staff and all the work you do. Uh, you know, as, as uh, all of us sit on various commissions, uh, your staff is literally busy every single day making sure that uh, those meetings go well. It's it's not just, you know, the commissioners, the council meetings. So it, that's a lot of work. And then anecdotally, um, you know, the, the transition that I have had working from home has been wonderful as, yeah, you know, whenever I have any needs, uh, they're Im immediately met. And I just really appreciate that hardworking team. Uh, my question is uh, about... Um, Whenever we move back into, you know, uh, in-person meetings, um, uh, you know, are, are we ready to do that? What is that going to look like? And, um, you know, if you could just briefly uh, talk about that. Sure. Uh, well, so now it's my understanding that the close of the budget process, you know, where you actually do a, do a formal reading of the budget and vote on that, that that is actually going to take place uh, by statute in, in traditional physical space. We will also be broadcasting it via Zoom. So uh, while we would encourage the general public who want to participate and comment on that to, to probably join via Zoom, uh, in theory, they could also show up at the, at the newly remodeled Nat Hill room in the courthouse uh, and, and you know be there at the podium in person. Uh, we are finishing up that remodel process uh, last week, the vendor that we hired to do that remodel uh, installed probably about 80% of the technical equipment. Uh, we're gonna start training on it on Friday. Uh, that'll give us a couple of weeks to work out any bugs and have it more than ready for you guys uh, when, when you come in on October 4th. Um, I don't know that you specifically asked about this, but moving forward, uh, if we get into a position where the governor has changed the um, uh, the mandate as far as meeting virtually, and we go into this scenario that we had talked about previously with hybrid meetings where uh, a lot of the county meetings would take place in physical space, but then would also be allowed to have people sitting on the board be coming in via Zoom and then also the public either being watch, watching via Zoom or in the physical space. Uh, we'll be ready to move forward with that as well. Uh, we remodeled quite a number of the county uh, conference rooms. Uh, we had a little bit of a setback because the week we finished remodeling the two major ones in the showers building, we had a substantial flood uh, that that required a lot of remediation work there and the construction supplies for that remediation work was really difficult to get and it's taken a lot of time. Uh, but it looks like the workers are finishing that up this week as well. So uh, I think we're pretty close to being fully up and operational in a hybrid environment, something completely new that I did not envision at the beginning of my career. Oh, that's that's great. I peek my head into the, the courthouse every once in a while, and, and it's always fun to see the progress being made. So thank you. All right, I saw Ms. Hawk's hand earlier, and then we'll go to Mr. Deckard after. Um, I just wanted to add a great big thank you. Um, a lot of members of the council are, are more fully equipped to understand how to just dash forward with everything that has happened. And your staff has just made certain that I would understand how to make the transition, how to make it work. 
And I just don't feel like I've had to make any stumbles along the way without your help. And I, uh, in addition, I really appreciate the fact that you're uh, putting the, the words at the bottom because so many times when we're trying to uh, have a discussion with people like today, I cannot hear Kim. Uh, you, normally I can, but today I, I cannot. And this makes a big difference. So uh, kudos to you and your entire team. Well, well, thanks for that. Yeah, the closed captioning thing actually, uh, you know, was an add on from Zoom uh, and, you know, hasn't taken a whole lot of effort on our part, but I agree with you. It, it is very helpful. Uh, quite often when I'm watching the government meetings, I'll have the closed captioning on. Uh, and um, so, yeah, I certainly understand where you're coming from on that. I think it's a vital part of making our governmental meetings accessible to the public who might have you know, whatever accessibility issues. Hey, right, Mr. Decker. Thank you very much. And I do want, I want to echo previous comments. And I, I, I think I said even last year during the budget, I thanked you for all the things that have been done, or at least it was in a meeting. And I'm always, it always blows my mind that we are still um, from last year, earlier last year, still kind of in this process. And, who would ever thought all that? The one question I, I, I guess I have is we're, we're going from uh, a small amount of miles per hour to a large amount of miles per hour on all these things and demands that we're putting on meeting facilitation. What used to be just show up at the courthouse, something's posted and cats will be there for most meetings has now become really, really complicated. It's very convenient for a lot of folks. My question to you is, do you do you feel that as this is all worked out that there's some comfort points where you can say, hey, look, we can do a lot here, but we can't, this isn't a movie studio. This is not a um, there's some things that are getting lost in the process and, and maybe uh, we can't get to all these levels that we want to keep this uh, in the format that maybe everyone's envisioning because of all this. I hope that makes sense, but I wanted to hear your thoughts. I mean, you know, one of the struggles with it was, you know, when we came out of the spring and we're moving into the summer, we thought we had a fairly good handle on what the situation was going to be like. And we were going to have these hybrid meetings. And that was the goal that we were working towards. And, uh, you know, not to fault the governor for, you know, continually extending the mandate. Uh, I, you know, and again, I don't want to say that that's a bad thing, but a couple of those times that he did that took caught me off guard and, and meant that we had to pretty suddenly pivot in a different direction. Um, you know, I had originally in preparation for the first month of the hybrid meetings had hired a new part-timer that was going to specifically be helping out uh, and proctoring those hybrid meetings. And so suddenly I had an extra guy in the office that, you know, I had to find other things to keep busy, which of course was not a problem. Um, but so, yeah, it, the, the constantly shifting environment has definitely proven to be a challenge. Uh, in general, the, managing of all the different meetings has taken uh, organizational skills more than anything else. Uh, and with so many moving parts and so many different meetings happening from so many different departments, sometimes it, it the wires do get crossed and, and whatnot, but largely it's an organizational problem to solve, which, you know, I, I, I find those problems a little easier than some of these conceptual technical issues that you've got to bring in under budget and, and things of that nature. So, I mean, I, at this point, I feel like, and I feel like if I needed another person uh, between you and the commissioners, I don't think anyone would hesitate to help me hire another person to help out. But I mean, I've always tried to keep things kind of conservative on a manpower standpoint in the department. So, I mean, I, I do try to keep the staff as lean as I can on that. So hopefully we won't get to that point. Thank you very much. Okay. Any, uh, any additional questions? All right, uh, seeing none, we will take a roll call vote to accept 
the Technical Services Department General Fund budget. Councillor Iverson? Yes. Councillor Spimore? Yes. Councillor Munson? Yes. Councillor Deckard? Yes. Councillor Welts? Sorry, yes. Councillor Hawk? Yes. Councillor McKim? Yes. Motion passed unanimously. All right, thank you. Next will be the public safety lit budget, TSD. Council, I move to open for discussion and review fund 1170-0106, public safety lit TSD. With zero budgeted in personnel, supplies, and capital, and $70,000 budgeted in services for a total budget of $70,000. Second. All right. This budget was prepared by Angie Purdy. Uh, I'm hoping that she is here to uh, help us out with this. Actually, it wasn't. I don't know. Um, I, I believe, oh, I know. I believe this is for, well, clearly says it, the telephone maintenance. Um, we had taken on, our technical services had taken on the payment of all of our um, phone bills, if you will. And there is a portion that we can actually pay from the public safety lit because it's the sheriff's department. And so that's what this is um, for. And it had been previously paid for through their we but did it, I think last year was the first year that this happened. Um, essentially, what we did was we consolidated the cell phone bills. Yeah. You know, I'd say probably 65% of the county's cell phone bills were being paid for by, by TSD. And then some of the departments were paying for their own uh, at a higher price. Uh, and and it made for the um, it made for this clerical mess where you know one of my staff had to take these bills and had to separate out different things. It was much more complicated than it would be if we moved it all under TSD. Mm -hmm. So uh, Angie came up with the idea of consolidating it, and then this year is when the whole public safety lit idea happened, where we were able to put uh, the sheriff and some of the phone bills in that fund. Okay, got it. Um, Ms. Munson and then Mr. McKim. I just wanted to provide uh, additional information. It was <clears throat> in 2016 that um, the bill was uh, paid for from this fund and it was $116,000 uh, compared to uh, the proposal tonight, which is 70,000. So it looks like <clears throat> uh, this was good management of our limited resources. Great. All right, thank you. Um, Mr. McKim. So, so overall, what do our, our phone expenses look like? Are they pretty stable uh, overall, regardless of what fund they're being paid out of? Do you have a sense of that? You know, the pandemic caused an explosion in our in our phone bill. I mean, that, that's going to be a surprise to nobody here. Uh, and we had departments suddenly have a very serious need for a lot more cell phones, a lot more Wi-Fi hotspots than they had previously, because you know, like the health department was having to do all sorts of things that they hadn't prior to that. Same thing with the sheriff department. I, you know, it it. I would say the cost per minute has gone down because our consumption has gone up. Uh, and um, but but general overall, when you add it all together, we're definitely paying substantially more than we were before. But we're also getting an exponential, an exponentially larger amount of service as a result. For it. Now, the, the, the one 
the one you know thing that has helped out with is we're paying so much in the monthly service that a lot of our equipment cost has has literally gone away. We're buying phones for a dollar. Uh, we're buying hotspots for a dollar, uh, and 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 you know that helps defray the cost a lot. Yeah, and, and just to kind of piggyback, though, when we get to the more of the commissioner's budgets, there's actually additional telephone maintenance um, that has been budgeted into the cable franchise um, budget. We can talk, see that there, um, because they didn't want to increase the county general budget. Okay. And, and thank you. And then I, I guess I also just want to make sure that uh, at some point, I, I assume you're probably checking to make sure that that's the amount being charged to public safety is still an appropriate, is still appropriate proportional to the total cost of our of our phones that were they were not charging more to the public safety fund than, you know, than we should be based on the the usage by public safety employees. Yeah, I mean, it's we've got it separated out a hundred percent of mm -hmm. the monies that are coming from the PS lit is directly attributable to uh, things that are allowable within mm -hmm. that fund. Um, oh. I mean, it's, it's, we've just got it all separated out that way. Great. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Just in the nick of time, one minute and 21 seconds left. <laughs> Ms. Welch, is that your hand? Yeah. Yes, sorry, and I'll do it really quickly. Hopefully we'll make it um, under time. Um, do we have any departments who are still uh, having telephone maintenance in their budgets or has it all been taken care of and consolidated into fewer? To the best of my knowledge, I would say that we've got it all within you know, these funds. Okay. Uh, having said that, I've not looked at anyone else's budgets, but then ones that directly affect me. So, you know, if you find any surprises along those, you know, let me know and we'll figure out what's going on with that. Definitely. I, you know, I feel like having it all consolidated under TSD, uh, once we got over the initial administrative function of it has been a, a better way to do it for the county. Sure. Sure. Great. Thank you. Okay, and Ms. Munson, did you have another question? Oh, okay. All right, well, if there's nothing further from council, we'll take a roll call vote to accept uh, TSD's public safety lit fund budget. Councilor Wilkes? Yes. Councilor Munson? Yes. Councilor Hawk? Yes. Councilor Iverson? Yes. Councilor McKim? Yes. Councillor Spoonmore? Yes. Councillor Deckard? Yes. Motion passed unanimously. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. And so um, I want to revisit the legal department. Mr. Schilling has joined us. So we can go back to that budget. Council, I move to open for discussion and review again. Uh, fund 1000-0277 general fund legal with $602,405 in personnel, $1,145 in supplies, $43,538 in services, zero in capital for a total budget of $647,088. Second. Okay, welcome, Mr. Schilling. Thank you very much, and I apologize for being late. Uh, this budget is the same budget that we uh, filed last year with four exceptions. Uh, one is a $400 increase in longevity. Uh, two would be the $30 bump in FICA associated with that. Uh, three, there's a $3,000 bump in the self-insurance and for, I believe, $720 has been added for the annual disciplinary fee for the attorneys. Otherwise, it's exactly the same as last year's budget. All right, I don't think we've added the 720 yet, but that may be coming okay. uh, by way of motion here. 
Uh, Council, I move we uh, add line 30039 professional membership and set it to $720. Second. Okay, so there we go. Uh, we'll take some questions now on Mr. McKim's uh, motion. Ms. Hawk? Uh, yes, is this uh, in reaction to what the other budget that we heard for public defender and prosecutor? Yes, it is. Okay, thank you. I just wanna make sure we had that covered. And I will just say that, that, that I'm proposing it also just because I think it's the right thing to do. Professional subscriptions right. or memberships are required for, you know, to, for somebody to be able to do their job for the county. You just need to make sure it's fair all the way yep. across the board, not leave any Great. Okay. Mr. Schilling, mm -hmm. do you know um, why the county has never done this before? Well, um, I think uh, the idea was that uh, to hold the position, you had to hold a license. And that's part of holding your, that cost is just part of holding your license. Hmm. So yeah. I, I had no idea that uh, other offices were, were obtaining those funds. Okay. Well, I certainly support uh, this motion and um, look forward to voting in favor for it. Does anybody else have any questions or comments on Mr. McKenna's motion? All right, seeing none, Ms. Miller, we'll do a roll call vote. Councilor McKen? Yes. Councilor Decker? Yes. Councilor Hawk? Yes. Councilor Munson? Yes. Councilor Wiltz? Yes. Councilor Iverson? Yes. Councilor Spoonmore? Yes. Motion passed unanimously. All right, and as we're updating our figures here, we'll see if there's any other questions or discussion on the legal department's uh, budget. Any council members have other questions or comments? Does not appear so. So we'll get these updated numbers and uh, updated motion. Yes, council, I move that we accept the um, budget for general fund legal as described previously with um, in the, I'm sorry, as described previously in personnel and supplies and with an addition of $720 in the services category, making that category 44000 $258 for a total budget of $647,808. Second. Okay. Anything further from council on this? All right, seeing none, we'll do a roll call vote to accept the budget as amended. Councillor Wiltz? Yes. Councillor Iverson? Yes. Councillor Deckard? Yes. Councillor Hawk? Yes. Councillor Munson? Yes. Councillor McKim? Yes. Councillor Spoonmore? Yes. Motion passed unanimously. Okay, and that will conclude everything for the legal department. Thank you, Mr. Schilling. And we'll Thank now you jump. Much. You're welcome. And we'll now jump uh, back to item nine emergency management. Council, I move to open for discussion and review. Fund 1000-0361 General Fund Emergency Management with $152,675 in personnel, $5,600 in supplies, $30,950 in services, and zero in capital for a total budget of $189,225. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second, and we have Allison Moore joining us from Emergency Management. Welcome, Ms. Moore. Hi, good evening. Thanks for having me. I also have Kate Petroline here yeah. Um, yeah. with me as well, um, since I am planning to be departing from the county on the 24th of this month. And since we're talking about next year's budget, I wanted to pull her in as well, and I wanted to let you know um, that the budget that was submitted um, had both of us 
uh, both of our involvements as well as the uh, support of our emergency management advisory board and um, so that you guys were aware of that. We do have three changes in our budget for this year and they are all actually um, in favor of reductions. One is office supplies and we had added additional amounts in our 2021 budget because we were moving offices and we um, were thinking that there may be additional expenses. And there were, of course, this year with that move, but we went back to our regular amount that we have requested in years prior. Um, so there's a reduction in that line. There is also a reduction in our program supply line. We um, had that for a damage assessment application and the state no longer allow, um, makes us, I guess, pay for that application. So they are now providing that for us. And so we have reduced that amount to $2,500 um, from the 4,200 that we had requested last year. And then lastly, um, our siren and um, radio line, we also reduced. And I just like to um, discuss a little bit about why we did that. I know that in the years past, we um, talked about how we, um, got more on a calendar structure. When I first started four years ago, um, every siren that we had needed some maintenance and they needed to be greased and rotated. And so what we did is we got on a more of a rotation. And so this particular calendar year that's coming up, there is not as much maintenance that's gonna be needed for our 41 tornado sirens. But I'd like to make it noted um, that even though we are reducing that amount this year, there may be years in the future where that also needs to be increased um, back up to that you know, $27,000, $28,000 mark. So um, we do not anticipate needing those funds this year, but just know that in the future, there may be an additional request for a higher amount in the future. And I'd also like to just talk just a little bit about what some of the things that we've done, you know, this last year. Um, when I started in the budget hearings in 2021, I thought it was probably the last, the hardest year that any emergency management offices had had. Um, with COVID and in regards of the pandemic that we were in. Little did I know that that was gonna continue through the 20, all through the 2021 year. And then we were also gonna throw in a summer flood that we had to um, spend a, an additional amount. We're actually still assisting some residents with, with the recovery of that June flood. We also had a winter storm, um, several storms, but a, a very large one on February 14th. And so we um, had to declare a disaster for that and worked um, significantly long hours through those few weeks uh, in order to keep our residents safe. So um, those were a couple, a couple of large things that we had to deal with um, beyond the pandemic this year. Um, also included in the building department, we have had a significant impact in being included in the new hospital and a lot of those changes and making sure that they have things for our EMTs and our first, um, our first responders um, with that. And we also will be assisting in the transition of one hospital to another, um, getting them equipment that's needed and additional ambulances and such. And so we are very much um, communicating with them. And we of course, enjoy that partnership that we have with our hospital. So that's what I have for you this evening. All right. Well, thank you very much for uh, all of that information. And we'll check with council now to see if there's any questions or comments here. Looks like Ms. Munson uh, and then Mr. Iverson. I just wanted to uh, thank Allison Moore for her incredible leadership as she's directed the department. <clears throat> and we wish you very well in the future. We know you've set the department uh, in, in good stead and um, thank you for everything you've done for the residents of Monroe County. Thank you, Council. Appreciate that. Thank you, Mr. Iverson. Allison, I also wanted to thank you. Uh, you've really been a staple whenever there's been a disaster in the community. Um, and, you know, whenever uh, I see, you know, videos on my phone or, or wherever, you're always there. So really appreciate everything you've done. And, and I'm really happy to publicly thank you for your service to all the residents of Monroe County. Uh, I did have a quick question. 
Um, could you share with us um, how the usage rates are for the resident alert system where you go to the, our front homepage and sign up for uh, emergency alerts on your phone or, or other devices? Yeah, absolutely. We are very fortunate in Monroe County that the Board of Commissioners um, pays for that service for the county. And so it's free for any resident of Monroe County, or if you are a parent of a student in Monroe County and you wish to know what's happening in Monroe County, it's, it's a service we offer for anybody. Um, and you, you not only get any kind of weather event that you sign up for, you also can get um, any health alerts or any um, anything from our health board in regards to our pandemic as well, and you can sign up for as much or as little that you want to that you want to receive. So if you only want notices for floods, you can click only on floods, and you won't get anything in regards to tornadoes or any other weather events. But if you want every weather event that could potentially happen in Monroe County, you have the prerogative to to, to select all of those, and then also. Um, you can receive your messages however you wish as well. So if you just want to get a text message, um, because maybe you don't want that, you don't want woken up in the middle of the night, but maybe you do. And so maybe you want a phone call to your home phone or your cell phone, um, and you can collect, you can select as many of those um, options or as little as those options as you want. And so um, you can go to the co.monroe.in.us homepage where you can click on the megaphone um, where it also says the Citizens Monroe County Alert. And um, you can sign up for free. And if you're someone that doesn't, maybe not computer savvy, um, but you really want to get these alerts on your home phone or a cell phone, you can give our office a call at 812-349-2546. And we will be more than happy to walk through the process with you and get you signed up for those alerts. Thank you, Allison. And have you seen uh, uh, more people uh, signing up for those? Um, have, there's, have there been an uptick on, in, in those? Yes. Yes. This last year, um, we had probably around 29,000 um, individuals that had signed up for our alerts, and we are almost to 40,000 now. So we've had a significant amount more people in the county sign up. And I do think that that might have a lot to do because when we have testing sites that open or where our vaccine locations have been, we've been able to advertise that through the alert system. And so people have definitely wanted that information and we will gladly continue to share that. Um, and I do think that that's been why there's been such an increase. Thank you. All right, uh, Ms. Wilkes. Uh, thanks. Actually, I had a, the same question um, that Peter had. So um, I no longer have a question, but I do want to thank you and wish you well um, as you as you move on in your career. Thank you. And, um, for Kate, I, I hope that there's a very uneventful, a smooth transition. And perhaps we'll, we'll nothing, at, no emergencies at all in 2022. Absolutely. Yeah, I think Alice and I can both agree we've had our fill for 20. But yeah, for the rest of the year, I'd, I'd like a little bit of a quiet. Uh, yeah. We said we try not to say that Q word. <laughs> yeah, the, likely, the likelihood of that happening is zero. <laughs> All right, uh, Mr. Deckard. Thank you very much. And I also want to jump in here. I, I wasn't going to say very much, but the other counselors have started and I do want to comment. You, you're a short timer now. You got 10 more days to go. And I think this is probably the last time you may appear before council and congratulations on that too. But I, I just want to thank you because I spent, I think the first year and a half before uh, counselor months and I got to spend some time as your liaison and and particularly as the pandemic started, um, you, you knew how panicky my questions were and you always were very reassuring. And I've seen that consistently in your role for the public. I'm not the liaison to the health department or Penny Cottle would have got those calls from me, but I, I'm grateful to you for that. And I also wanna sing your praises just a little bit more and mention that you not only, you know, we've talked at length about certifications that you've had. You went out and you worked hard to get it. You didn't have to do that, you did that which benefited this community. And you have also been recognized, uh, I wanna read it because it's, uh, make sure I get it right, the 2021 Clayton R. Christopher Memorial Local Emergency Manager Award. And that is a big deal. 
And that brings honor to this community that you did it. And all of us have seen you in action. We know that when we vote for these dollars, that these are important things for our community. Uh, but even on a personal level, just watching you among all our law enforcement officers, among all our first responders, um, particularly, I will never forget when Deputy Driver's funeral procession was underway and you were assisting and coordinating with that, making sure that, trying to help make sure that school buses uh, didn't get blocked in traffic and that people got places. And you know that, uh, to take burden away from others on a day of burden and, and pain, that's a huge thing. And I, I'm just grateful for that. That's huge. I, I, the last thing I'll say, and I'll be quiet, is that the requirements that we're going to be putting on your job generally and your what you do as a profession, you and Kay, is it's only going to grow because we're in a world that's only going to recognize more that emergency management's the key to the key to keeping the kingdom. And um, that kind of professionalism that you brought to it helps set an example. I'm just grateful for it. And congratulations on your next move, and we will miss you quite a bit. Thank you so much. Yes, I was uh, I was terribly saddened when I uh, saw the news that uh, of your upcoming departure. But um, it was really great to see what the what's going to be coming next for you, and um, you know to to be working for uh, one of Indiana's great. Uh, corporate citizens and, and employers here in, in a leadership role and taking the experiences that you've uh, really honed here in Monroe County to an organization like that. You know, we'll never be able to compete with these types of uh, companies and things, but it is great to see our people go on and further their careers at, uh, at places like that. So congratulations on everything. Uh, you made us all very proud. Thank you. I've been very happy to be a part of this family. Appreciate it. Okay, anything further from council? All right, seeing none, uh, we'll take a roll call vote to accept emergency management's general fund budget. Councilor Wiltz? Yes. Councilor Munson? Yes. Councilor Hawk? Yes. Councilor Iverson? Yes. Councilor McKim? Yes. Councilor Spoonmore? Yes. Councilor Deckard? Yes. Motion passed unanimously. Okay. And uh, one more here with emergency management. Council, I move to yeah. open for discussion and review fund 1152-0000, right to know. With $0 for personnel, $100 in supplies, 8,500 in services, 1,500 in capital for a total budget of $10,150. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Ms. Moore or Ms. Right. This, um, as I've always said in years past, is our local um, planning committee's fund. And we are the fiscal agent um, in the emergency management office. So it is an array of individuals in our community that come together for hazmat, Pre prevention, preparedness, mitigation, and of course, planning um, for any disaster that could occur. Um, there is some reductions in our budget. This is 100% grant funds. Um, we budgeted more last year, but we didn't receive as much. And of course, we can only use what we receive. Um, so this year, as a, as a committee, we decided to uh, reduce our budget just a little bit uh, we're hoping that when we get our funds for the 2022 year, that they will be a little bit higher than they were last year. Um, we may have to have an additional reduction once we get those funds, but we do get our money rolled over for this on this um, account every year. So we actually have, if, if, if we don't receive um, the amount, the $10,150 we actually have um, a, a line where we can come back to you and reappropriate because every year what we don't spend, it rolls over into a pot of money with this fund. Um, we do plan to use some of these funds for a, a big exercise that we're going to be having virtually, a tabletop exercise in November. And all of the individuals in our community will come together virtually and plan for 
um, a scenario that Kate and I have been working on. Uh, Kate fearlessly has been working on um, to prepare our, our first responders. Um, those exercises are always wonderful um, because all of our partners have to come together and work together. And it includes highway, city utilities, um, water companies, as well as our, our, our general first responders, such as dispatch, law enforcement, fire, and EMS. Our hospitals are included in that as well. So it is a big event um, that we'll be having no, in the beginning of November to just prepare for any kind of hazmat event that may in fact come here. We use those, those drills as learning events. And so a lot of these funds are gonna be utilized for that. Um, our office is very much included in that. And um, I think that's probably enough for this fund, especially since it's just grant funds. But I'll answer any questions that you may have about it. All right, let's see if we have any questions. Any questions or discussion on the emergency management right to no fund? I will let you know that the current cash balance is $33,854. Okay. Very good. Let's, uh, well, if there's nothing uh, from council here, we'll take a roll call vote to accept the right to no fund budget. Councilor Wilt. Yes. Councilor Hawk. Yes. Councilor Decker. Yes. Councilor Spoonmore. Yes. Councilor Munson. Yes. Councilor McKim. Yes. Councilor Iverson. Yes. Motion passed unanimously. <clears throat> Thank you much, so much, Council. You've been a joy to work with. Thank you. Have a good evening. You too. Okay, Council. I am. Uh, I'm going to. I'm going to ask that we take just a very short recess here. I am totally starved and have got to get something to eat before we get into these next budgets. Otherwise, I may not be able to concentrate as as much as I'd like to. Uh, so let's. Let me take a look at my clock here. Can we? Can we get back together here at 6.20? It's 6.09 right now. Is, is, that, is that okay with everybody? Yep. Okay. Thank you. We'll take a brief recess here until 6.20. We'll start back promptly at 6.20. Okay. I've got 6.20, so we'll go ahead and reconvene here. Thanks again for, for the little break there. And we'll just, uh, we'll, this will be the highway department that we get started with. Would you like me to proceed? Sure. Council, I move to open for discussion and review fund 1135-0000 cumulative bridge. With $357,992 in personnel, $317,500 in supplies, $1,135,818 in services, zero in capital, for a total budget of $1,811,310. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Ms. Ridge, uh, welcome. And uh, Mr. Turner, welcome. Look forward to your uh, presentation here. All right, well, I will keep this first opening remark pretty pretty quick. Um, I do want to take a second to thank the council for um, addressing the job descriptions and salaries by hiring the WIS consultants. Um, I want to advocate for not myself, but for all of my 50 plus employees. They never stop during the pandemic. They don't stop during a tornado. They don't stop during a winter event and they never complain. However, as you can see from my emails, probably on a weekly basis, that we lose valuable employees continuously to outside higher paying positions. It's getting harder to fill these positions due to the rate of pay. I remember the day when we had 30 to 40 applicants for any one job opening. And as of today, we're lucky to get one or two, um, but mostly without the skill of a CDL license that's required for these positions. Um, Please do what you can to help retain good, hardworking employees in Monroe County and the Highway Department. I know you've set aside some funds to help fund the WIS recommendations, and I thank you for that as the department thanks you for that. And I hope you will consider implementing the whole plan and put employees um, of Monroe County first in 2022. 
So moving on to 1135 Cume Bridge budget. Um, we stayed with the recommendations for the benefits of the increases there. And we also, um, the, the salaries were flatlined as, as guided by the council. Uh, we have new lines created, but those were created in 2021 when we created uh, new lines in the Cume Bridge budget. Uh, and then we added a couple of bridge projects for to fund in 2022, and then added to existing bridge projects for, for the future. Um, and that's all I have for 1135, if you have any questions. I'm sure we'll have some here for you. Who would like to get started? Uh, Mr. McKenna. How's the Rogers Bridge coming? Um, actually, uh, the uh, curb and gutter is installed. The fence is half installed. Uh, we will um, be doing a walkthrough on Thursday at 11 a.m. And then we anticipate opening that, that road, Roger Street Bridge. Oh, fantastic. Thank you. Mm -hmm. What did you say that Thursday? Thursday. Okay. Well, we're doing a walkthrough at 11, but we don't, we don't yeah. anticipate not being able to open it. Okay. Very good. Um, any other questions on the cumulative bridge budget? Any comments? All right. Let's see. Yeah, Mr. McKim. Just one more. Yeah. So I, I assume you are still going to come by later for an additional appropriation uh, with a more formal presentation on bridge projects for the for the well, actually, we changed it last year, and these are pretty well set up like our other budgets to where we don't have to treat it separately. And so we started that. Uh, we worked with the council office and uh, Kim uh, setting up our budget in the Cume Bridge um, like we've done, like I said, like our other budgets. Uh, we want to make everything pretty consistent. Um, so we really just have to come back this one time a year. If we do have additional bridge projects that we want to fund, yes, we would be coming back and explaining those projects to you. Okay, is, is there anything in particular in these projects you wanna call our attention to, any particularly large? Uh, um, the um, North Shore uh, Drive Bridge probably has, we put in $350,000 there. We had put that in for a community crossing a, um, project that we were not awarded that, but we wanted to go ahead and set the funds aside. Uh, we wanna put that out to bid and do that one in the spring. Uh, the Roar Road, um, two bridges on that, um, that is ongoing. We are just now getting ready to design the Roar Road Bridge 75 and the Bells Road Bridge 45. Um, that Road Bridge 79, also we are getting ready to go into design for that. Uh, Vernal Pike Bridge, we already have that under, um, under design. Baby Creek Road, um, Bridge, we moved that to a grant fund, actually. And then we have the Rockport uh, Bridge that we're funding. That's a federal aid project. Um, so yeah, and all the new bridges that we listed that we're funding, the uh, Bells Road, the uh, that road, and the Roar Road 75 um, are new um, projects that we're going to put under design. And they're all, all listed in our five-year plan for our bridge projects. Thank you. What's the location of the Rockport Bridge? The Rockport Bridge 308 is just south of Bowling Lane. Okay. It's to be constructed in fiscal year 2025. Yeah. Great. Ms. Hawk? You're muted. Yeah, your microphone is muted. I've been trying not to cough in your face. <laughs> um, I, I just wanted if somebody would bring us up to date on that rate times what we believe the assessed value is, what, what that's supposed to bring in. The estimated revenue. Right. Um, Kim might have to give you that. I, we did our form. Um, Form 33s, but we were instructed not to put in the um, the property tax into our estimated revenue sheets. It's in that draft 4B that uh, I had originally created. Uh, Kim, Michelle, if you could just bring that up. I, I just wonder if there have been any changes since we discussed it. 
<laughs> there, there isn't. I, you know, I will. I, uh, well, I guess I'll wait for, I'll wait for it to come up. I mean, what did we take into consideration the circuit breaker on that? The remember the the DLGF this year didn't give us any guidance on the circuit breaker. So right now we're taking it all out of general, but we can certainly move some into into Cume Bridge. They they were they gave us minimal guidance this year so yeah if, if you look at uh uh at column k there for cume bridge uh let me orient myself for a second there um the yeah okay so the property tax yeah okay so the the line 19 that says it's in white that says 2022 levy calculated that's 1.75 million you see that right. that is if their last year's levy simply increased by the growth quotient of 4.3%. But in reality, since it's a rate controlled fund, uh, if we actually apply the, the, uh, the cor correct net AV to the tax rate, we get $1.821 million. So the, the rate is actually gonna bring in more than the simple, than the uh, more growth than the levy growth would have been, which of course kind of comes out of the, uh, you know, comes out of all the other, since it's a zero sum game, it comes out of what we have available for general. So, you know, we could certainly, if we chose to um, allocate some more of the, um, uh, the circuit breaker to that fund, at least to maybe to make up for that loss. Right. And the reason why I'm suggesting that is that everyone is saying, please, you know, try to follow what Wiz is saying and, and hopefully get those raises in there. Yeah. And so we need to make sure we are doing what we can. Yeah, so we could certainly shift, what, $75,000 worth of, uh, well, maybe maybe a little more than that of circuit breaker into that fund, which would then give them the same, basically the same levy growth that, uh, that, that the other funds would be getting. And the rest group. Yeah. Just trying to make the numbers work. Yep, no, nope, good, good. Questions? Any other questions or comment, Ms. McKim? Did you have a? Oh, sorry, no, I do not. Any further discussion, from Council? All right, let's take a roll call vote on this budget. Councillor McKim? Yes. Councillor Hawk? Yes. Councillor Spoonmore? Yes. Councillor Iverson? Yes. Councillor Wiltz? Yes. Councillor Munson? Yes. Councillor Deckard? Yes. Motion passed unanimously. Um, Sorry, go ahead. Council, I move to open for discussion and review Fund 1169-0000 Local Roads and Streets. With $0 in personnel, $520,000 in supplies, $50,000 in services, zero in capital, for a total budget of $570,000. Second. Yeah. If you would like me to explain any of these, um, most of our big projects move to grant funds, so that's why you see this as lower amounts. Um, we didn't appropriate all the funds because we will eventually do a cash to cash transfer to those grant funds to help uh, fund those federal aid projects. Uh, which was Hunters Creek Road um, and Sample Road, phase one and phase two. Um, and then we increased um, the bituminous line uh, to 200,000 to help assist and improve our uh, pavement program um, in 2022. Got it, thank you. Mr. McKim? Yeah, so since you mentioned Sample Road and Hunters Creek, uh, can you give us just a quick update on, on where we are? Sure. Um, tomorrow afternoon, we're having a utility relocation meeting on Sample Road for um, uh, that project. The main construction of Sample Road East and West will be in 2022. Uh, 2021 is set aside for utility relocations. Um, and pretty much the same with Hunters Creek. Uh, we ran into some delays there due to supplies not being available for one of the utility companies. Uh, so they ran a four-week delay on that. It was our goal to have um, Hunters Creek Road um, completed by 2021. I don't think that that's going to happen at this point. They do have until the fall of 2022 to complete the project. They were just trying to escalate it. 
um, but with COVID, um, supplies and materials, it's kind of hindered some of the um, progress on that. But it's still moving. Was down there yesterday. Um, I will. It, it's a mess, but um, it's it's coming along. They're building some of the retaining walls and um, Emmy walls. So that's yeah, where we're at with those. And so, has all the property acquisition been uh, completed on both samples? Yes, we have one that is going through um, final litigation. It's basically um, a, a judgment to reach a settlement. Uh, we just made our final offer on that. However, the project has already moved forward because um, we had already deposited what was the original offer from the appraisals. And that goes in to the courts and until we can decide what the property owner. So um, technically, yes, all the property has been acquired. Fantastic. Thank you. Very good. Mr. Iverson. Uh, yeah, uh, thank you for being here, Ms. Ridge. Uh, I think um, it's, it's very interesting to see the 1,000% increase on the bituminous line. Uh, it, could you just talk a little bit about why it's such a large increase? Um, we have over 725 miles of roadway to maintain. Um, we had a, we've shown a decrease in the MBH budget every year until this year for the last three or four years. Uh, um, and what we do is we um, program our overhead costs, our um, you know personnel, utilities, um, and then whatever's left out of that MVH estimated revenue, we just throw it into bituminous. But that bituminous line also goes for pothole patching, uh, cold patching, um, and paving. So we are trying to stretch as many dollars as we can um, to build a better paving program. And I think. We're succeeding with community crossings and utilizing that to the best of its ability. Um, local road and street has always typically been used for road, um, projects such as Sample Road, Hunters Creek Road, and New Roadway. But over the years, we're trying to, uh, it's, it's hard to maintain what you have, but keep building new because you're still adding to that, but not getting a lot more revenue from that. Um, so we want to try and utilize more budgets to help, because that's what the public wants. They want to see paving. They want to see blacktop. Um, they don't want to see potholes. They don't want to just see paver patching. Um, so that's why we are trying to utilize more of the local road and street budget um, to help fund for a better paving project or better paving program throughout the years. Um, Mr. Deckard and then Ms. Hawk. Thank you, Lisa. And <clears throat> forgive me if you've already covered this, but <clears throat> if a if someone um, goes online and reports like a hole or a patch, is this what covers that, or is that other dollars as well? No. It, it anytime there's a pothole patch that comes out of that by two minutes line. Gotcha. So theoretically, with the amount here, more pothole patching, aka more local road repairs. Yeah, absolutely. Gotcha. gotcha. Thank you. Ms. Um, and I've lost the terminology of it, but there was like a building that's being built to be able to store. Brian. Brian, Brian. How could I forget that? I do that every Thanksgiving. Yes. Um, <laughs> how is that coming along? Because you had hoped that no later than the beginning of next year, that would be ready to go. That, that has been our hope to have that up and running for the winter. Um, it's uh, we just signed the papers to get uh, permits for to advertise for a contractor, I believe, to start construction. I don't think that we will have the full system up and running for this upcoming winter season. Um, again, everything is delayed due to we had a hard time of even finding a garage door to be able to put on this building that would fit our needs. Um, the costs have escalated from, as you're aware, we were given two hundred and eighty five thousand dollars from NDOT to build this system. And looking at our numbers now and water, um, uh, dealing with the water company and relocations of water lines at the garage and those types of unanticipated costs, we will most likely be coming for an additional in the upcoming months to help um, cover the cost of that brewing system. It was our every our intention. We started this in February, I believe, when we got the money from NDOT. We appropriated it immediately um, in the MBH budget and signed a contract, I believe, in April with the um, architect. But 
working through all the bugs and what's available to be able to build this building um, has been um, challenging to say the least through okay, a pandemic. So, so the question is, I'm looking at line 23300. Would, they, would it go in that line somehow, some of the... Uh, Material. Well, that's what we would use. That would that would be the material that we would use once we make the brine. So salt would come out of that and you mix it basically with water in the system. But the actual expenses of building this building is coming out of the MBH. Right. I'm just, just trying to figure out if we, if you think you'll, I mean, if we were got lucky enough and had that finished up, uh, then you might need to come in and change that dollar amount. Of course, you can always spend what you get, so... Yeah, we probably, we would not be coming in decreasing the salt line. Okay. Have anything else from council on the local roads and streets fund budget? All right. Uh, seeing none, Ms. Miller will take a roll call vote to accept the local roads and streets budget. Blair Deckard. Yes. Councillor Wiltz? Yes. Councillor McKim? Yes. Councillor Munson? Yes. Councillor Hawk? Yes. Councillor Iverson? Yes. Councillor Spoonmore? Yes. Motion passed unanimously. Council, I move to open for discussion and review Fund 1171-0000 County Major Bridge with zero dollars budgeted for personnel supplies and capital, $2,500,000 budgeted in services for a total budget of $2,500,000. Sure. So we have two bridges under design um, in this um, budget. Uh, one is the Fullerton Pike Bridge and we have started, that is part of Fullerton Pike phase three from, um, Rockport Road to the, say the Rock, uh, Roger Street roundabout, a little bit west of that. Um, and then Mount Tabor Road Bridge, uh, number 13, um, which is just south of Bottom Road. So that's the two projects that we have under design um, and this fund to help um, fund those projects. Okay, thank you. Let's see if we have any questions. Ms. Hawk? Yes. Uh, when do you think the uh, Mount Tabor Road Bridge will commence the work on it? We have a meeting set up next Thursday for an update to our projects with that consultant. So I will have a, a better timeline. Uh, we should be finished up with design and starting right away acquisition on that project. Um, mm -hmm. I would say a year out. It's really needed. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, anything else? All right, uh, let's do a roll call vote to accept the County Major Bridge Fund budget. Councillor McKim? Yes. Councillor Spoonmore? Yes. Councillor Munson? Yes. Councillor Hawk? Yes. Councillor Iverson? Yes. Councillor Deckard? Yes. Councillor Wilkes? Yes. Motion passed unanimously. Council, I move to open for discussion and review Fund 1176-0530 Motor Vehicle Highway Administration with $789,692 in personnel, $11,000 in supplies, $500 in services, $19,000 in capital for a total budget of $820,192. Second. Okay. Okay, so the only thing that we did increase here um, was the overtime line due to we came in for an additional this past year for that. And then we had a bump in longevity due to um, years of service and then the benefit increase um, from instructions from council administration. Very good. Let's see if we have any questions. Any discussion? Pretty straightforward here. Um, uh, if there's nothing from council, we'll do a roll call vote to accept the motor vehicle highway 
Is this, uh, yeah, administration fund budget. Councillor Munson? Yes. Councillor Deckard? Yes. Councillor Hawk? Yes. Councillor Spinmore? Yes. Councillor Iverson? Yes. Councillor Wilkes? Yes. Councillor McKim? Yes. Motion passed unanimously. Council, I move to open for discussion and review Fund 1176-0531 Motor Vehicle Highway Maintenance and Repair. With $2,005,109 in personnel, $1,415,900 in supplies, $848,000 in services, $0 in capital, for a total budget of $4,269,009. Second. Yeah. So, and um, in, in personnel, the only in, there's some decreases there because those positions are vacant. So they would start out at a base pay um, versus the longer years of service. Um, we increased the overtime also in this um, budget due to uh, this past year's um, additional. Um, we increased our bituminous by about 550,000, and that is due to our revenue estimate. So. Anything that was extra, we threw into the bituminous line and that's what we typically do. Um, we increased our other supplies uh, based on transfers that we've done. Uh, we just changed the name of the signs from road signs to match our other budgets. Um, and then we eliminated landfill char charges to this is disposal fees um, since we um, haul to different locations, not just landfills. Um, and that would be the only changes that we have in that budget. Okay, thank you. Any questions for Ms. Ridge? Mr. McKim and then Ms. Munson. Just to comment, I guess there are, it does seem like there are a lot of uh, vacant positions in that, uh, in that budget. I know that's uh, the point you were trying to make earlier, but that's, uh, we can definitely see it uh, in the yellow lines here. Um, is, that, is that currently accurate that there are four positions in this fund that are currently vacant? And we have another one in our stormwater. Okay, thank so, you. And, and the, only, the only thing I could stress about that is these positions all get signed snow routes. So it, it trickles down to if those aren't filled, then we have to make a lot of adjustments within the department. We've always had one open position, uh, but technically we're down four or five if you can, if you include stormwater into that. Ms. Munson, then Ms. Hawk. Ms. Ridge, um, I'm curious about the disposal fees. Are, is this demolition material? No, it's usually debris things like that, clean up from a storm. I think okay. we can do, yeah. Okay, and, wh and where, do you, where do you take that? I believe sometimes to Good Earth Compost. Good. And I believe out on Gifford Road, I believe there's a composting site there. That's the two that I'm mainly aware of. Okay, thank you. Ms. Hall. Our, the sand that we clean up <coughs> is all to Terre Haute. Um, yes. Yeah. Yes, Ms. Hawk. Right. I just wanted to um, speak to all these vacancies. When you're talking to anybody out there in construction and they're talking about how long they have to wait for a concrete truck to come because of the lack of drivers. At one point, they were waiting two weeks for a concrete pour. So those contractors are going to up their game and start paying more money. They cannot afford to, you know, time is money. And they cannot afford to let those uh, projects to sit there while they're waiting on a concrete floor. So I don't know what the answer is, but it, we clearly are losing these people to the private sector. Okay, I, I agree. Just, I agree. We're seeing it every as, day. As long as construction continues to grow, we are going to lose our drivers. They're going to go where the money is. Just and and I and just to add on to that, um, we're trying to get the positions filled as as fast as we can. I, in 2021, they were to pass a new CDL um, policy 
nationwide. Um, it's going to take the cost of a CDL that might cost $250 to $3,000. Um, so we currently have a, a, a program, and this is kudos to Toby because he started this program of a CTL, CDL apprentice, and we bring them on with their permit, and they're allowed to drive with that permit, but then we help um, provide some training for 90 days, and they have to get their CDL license within that time. It's worked out really well. We've had three or four men on that, um, or employees on that program, and they have succeeded. Um, and they were actually thrilled that they were able to have the opportunity to get that CDL license with the county's assistance. I don't know what we'll do when it becomes a cost at $3,000 a pop, but um, it's gonna be harder and harder to get employees with CDL licenses. Um. Ms. Munson and then Ms. Wiltz. I forgot to take down my hand. Okay, Ms. Wiltz. Um, so is that change in the CDL the same? Didn't it change, lower the age of or something for people? I can't remember. No, it didn't change that. No, I think it's requiring more. Of, it was supposed to implement in 2021, but they pushed it back. And the last I heard it's 2022. Hopefully they'll push it back a little bit more. Um, it's basically, um, you have to go to a schooling. It's basically like, a, say, an Ivy Tech course and do their schooling, and you have to pay three or $4,000 for this schooling. We have been through the conferences that we attend that um, with different um, entities, and we've talked to, uh, some of the counties have talked with NDOT because they're going to be in the same boat as us, and they have considered making their own training facility um, to um, offer training to the employees and set it up. So we've, as counties, have um, inquired with NDOT if they do this, could we participate uh, with county employees? So everybody's kind of in the same boat as, as Monroe County and the, and the CDL policy. So hopefully we can all get together and come up with a good plan that will help, help each other. Yeah, that's because that's, that's a, a big leap. It's huge. Yeah, um, I did have, that was actually just a bonus question. I had another question. <laughs> um, the overtime costs, um, I mean, that's just always there. I get that. Um, but is that something then that presumably if we were able to address the vacancies, you would have less overtime? Um, if you have more people to do routes and things like that, Yes, you can probably get things done a little bit quicker. Um, this, of course, was, you know, you just never know what you're going to have in a year. You know, again, as listening to Allison and, and, and Kate earlier, you know, when you've had a, outside a pandemic, when you've had the tornadoes and then you have a two or three day winter storm, um, it really hits the budget hard. Um, but yeah, the more people you have out there, the less time you're going to have them out on, on call outs. So. Right. Okay. Thank you. Uh huh. Mr. Deppard. I had a <clears throat> follow up question on the on the age question. We we have lowered the age requirement on some positions down to eighteen, and I was curious <laughs> if that is helping at all, or is this the CDL requirement interfering in that? I mean, Toby can answer to this, but I think it's helped because we've actually brought on a couple, we just um, hired, um, uh, we had somebody go through a, a three week school that they found on their own got, and, and achieved getting their class A CDL. And he started this week, he's 18 years old. Um, he's, he was working you know, at Walmart, but he wanted a job with benefits and didn't want to go to college. And so it fit his needs. and. And he's thrilled to have that opportunity. So lowering that to 18 definitely helped us. Okay, thank you. We lowered the, we lowered the age on the job descriptions. That's what was kind uh -huh. of holding us up. Yeah. Um, question for Ms. Ridge and Mr. Turner. Have you in your experience working in the public sector seen any Anything like this uh, environment like we're in right now in terms of, uh, you know, the, the labor shortage uh, that we're experiencing. I, I was listening uh, on the radio today and, you know, heard just the, the numerous accounts of our local restaurants and uh, other employers here locally. They, they just can't even open 
for certain days of the week because they don't have anybody to work in the kitchen or, you know, work in the uh, front of the house. And I, you know, it's, I, I've, I, I've got a door, a front door for my house that I've ordered. It's going to take nine months to get the thing here. And I asked, well, why does it take nine months to get a door installed? Well, because of a labor shortage, they don't have anybody to work in the factories to finish the doors that the supply chain is all out of whack. They don't have anybody to drive the door to Bloomington. They don't have anybody to install the door. So you, you have to wait. So if the private sector is experiencing these kinds of issues, and we know they pay more than what we can pay in the public sector, this has really got to be, a, this is a huge conundrum. Have you seen anything like this before? No, I worked at the county for 34 years and you, you, you can find dozens of people that want to work um, at the highway department. They, we have great benefits. And that is the one thing that we try and sell on these jobs. Um, we had a mechanic position. Uh, that mechanic just went to another uh, to the town of Ellettsville. Uh, it's my understanding he's going to make three to four three to four more dollars on the hour of going over there. Um, we just we we can't keep up. We have, yes. like I said, we try and sell our benefits because I do think the county is a great place to work. Um, but in today's world, I think more people are thinking about their paycheck when they get that on that Friday versus retirement or holidays or um, those other types of future benefits. They're looking at today on what they can afford. Um, we had offered a, a position, to, we offered a, somebody a position just as of yesterday and he had to call us back and say, I can't, I can't do it. I can't take that little bit of pay cut um, uh, over the next few weeks because he was having to go through the CDL process and mm -hmm. so we just we're dealing with this on a daily basis we get some people to apply um but they have no trucking experience um and we have to think about those things but yeah. um i've never seen seen this me being at the county um tony or toby's been here 17 years i don't think he's seen it like this either uh, I, I also i think they see their their day-to-day -day expenses go up as well just like we are we're seeing the same things when, when we go to the store and 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 try to purchase things and, and, and they're seeing that too and, and trying to take care of themselves. Yeah, yeah, this is this is a, a conundrum and I, I just hope that this labor market will stabilize uh, at some point, but until then we're gonna have some real challenges on our hand. And I know it's not just the public sector. I mean, there's there's private sector employers that are dealing with much of the same issues. And I'm really astounded at some of the uh, uh, the minimum pay rates that a lot of employers have, have put into place. Um, it, it's been much higher than I've, I've ever seen in my lifetime, Absolutely. which is a good thing. But yeah, it's, I'd it's, like to give kudos to our guys too, because they are keeping up. Um, even though we're down some guys, they're, they're still, uh, mm -hmm. still going out there every day. And, and, and like I said, we've paved over 20 miles this year. Some of it's subcontract, some of it's in-house, um, but uh, we've probably kept up with the mowing and as bad a year as, as there's been in a long time. And uh, yeah, so kudos to, to our guys. And, and I will say those guys, um, if they were here, they would thank you for all the support that you've gave the geo bonds over the years for equipment um, and new trucks. Um, they, they do, the ones that's been here for a long time, have made the statement that they have not seen the equipment and things in, in this good a shape in many years. So um, a big thanks for the commissioners for supporting uh, the department on that and, and you guys supporting the submittals of those bonds. It's, it's helped our department a lot. As you can see, we don't have a lot of extra money to put into paving, but then when you have to take that money and you have to buy dump trucks and equipment, it pretty well takes it all. So. Mm -hmm. um, Great. Okay, anything further from council? All right, seeing none, uh, we will do a roll call vote to accept the MBH maintenance and repair budget. Councillor Spumore? Yes. Councillor Iverson? Yes. Councillor Wilkes? Yes. Councillor McKim? Yes. Councillor Munson? Yes. Councillor Deckard? Yes. Councillor Hawk? Yes. Motion passed unanimously. Council, I move to open for discussion and review fund 1176-0533 Motor Vehicle Highway 
general and undistributed. With $358,932 in personnel, $17,000 in supplies, $319,700 in services, $115,000 in capital for a total budget of $810,632. Second. All right. Okay, on this budget, again, overtime was increased for the mechanic line and master mechanic, uh, just in overtime. Um, we increased our software expenses. There's some, um, we have our cartograph, our asset management, uh, we have our charts, we have different programs at the highway garage for our mechanics that we need to keep uh, their software programs up to date also. Uh, we increased just the benefit lines just to match what the uh, council administration has guided us to do. Um, we made a line that's called building structure repairs. Just, that's just better tracking for us on what we spend on our repairs at the highway garage. And then we added $105,000 to vehicle purchase. Uh, the reason why we did that is because we haven't built a really good replacement retention program, uh, rotation program in the past on some of our vehicles. Um, so this is where we wanted to begin that process, um, just like we plan on doing for our dump trucks as, as we move forward. Um, this is, I kind of, I kind of think this is why we got in the bind that, uh, that we were in with our old vehicles, uh, spending a lot of money on maintenance for them. And if you can, um, we would work with, of course, our fleet maintenance coordinator and Greg Cron on what's the best options for trade-ins and, and things like that for the existing vehicles that we have. And that's it. All right, let's see if we have any questions. Any questions or discussion? Yes, Ms. Hawk. Um, would it be possible to have uh, line 38000 um, put under county commissioners the QMCAP budget? I mean, I don't know whether you're just talking about small repairs or whether you're, you just want a line item there to go to, but I mean, it's it was $1,000. It's better than nothing if we can move it over to QMCAP. I think sometimes we use that if we have to replace something within our building and for a you know, allotted to allowed to spend MBH to work on the building that our, our staff works in. Um, it might be something for what Toby a could be the brain, salt barn. It could be rain, gutters salt on barn. a pole barn. Could be a could broken be door. A door. Um, yeah, just kind of general uh, maintenance and, and repairs as, as things happen. I was and just going. Use none of it. I was just going down through here trying to think how we could pull something out of here and put it someplace else. Okay. Did, did you want to make a motion, Ms. Hawk? Well, not if they do, don't want it. Okay. If, they th if it would be easier for them to operate there, I don't want them taking a lot of time having to do something uh, with it. Okay. Uh, but what about the communications? That's 11,000, is that some that's for when we have to put radios and everything when, within our vehicles. And then also we have radios in our building for communication to our drivers and equipment. Okay, is there any way we could put that? I'm just, everybody just take a look at that and see if there's any one of those things we could pull out and put someplace else. I, you know, unless you could put it in lit special purpose, I don't know that it gets us anywhere. I mean, we're just as constrained and... Uh, uh, in the general fund and in uh, QMCAP as we are uh, here. Well, we got that special purpose then. Not not special purpose, just that. <laughs> you're <t> well, <laughs> oh, you're smart, Alec, because you meant that truly when you said <laughs> you're bad. You are bad. Um, I don't know, just trying to leave money there for the. Well, thanks anyway. Yeah, thank you. That's anyway, exactly. Okay, any other questions? Any discussion? All right. Um, we'll, uh, I do, I have, I yes. do. Yeah. Okay, vehicle purchase for 105,000. What, what's that? That's what I just explained about the uh, vehicle rotation. We've never built on a rotation program. Okay. 
I think some of our, I think some of our trucks and things didn't even have floorboards in them. So. <laughs> trying, trying to get things traded in where they still have some value. The government's able to buy vehicles um, at a pretty good discount. So if, if we can rotate those through instead of the old drive them till they're dead yep. and worth nothing. If we can sometimes if we can rotate those through a little faster, we can almost recoup our money and replace it with new if we can get in, into the habit of of getting into the rotation instead of just keeping them and and just limping them through and limping them through till finally they have no value at all. I think this is kind of similar uh, to some of the things we were working through with parks. Uh, and the equipment there and, and wanting to rotate yeah and when, Mr. We, buy, Turner, when we buy new we get a when we buy new we get a pretty good discount through the through the because we are a municipality mm -hmm. uh, and, and and then you sell you know trade them in or sell them uh we've had a great success selling surplus items on gov deals and uh we can sometimes if we can get rid of them soon enough we recoup quite a bit of money on those vehicles instead of just mm -hmm. wearing them out until they're absolutely worth nothing. Yep, that's great. And I know Mr. Turner had been uh, over the last few years really instrumental in getting this program into place for us. I think it's absolutely a, a, a very good strategy for us. So thank you for all the work on that. Yes, Ms. Hawk? Um, on the, uh, when we were hoping that the legislature would uh, not restrict how some of our dollars had to be used. Um, and uh, so how much of help would that be if they would remove that restriction? It would be, what we've met, I, I will say we've met our 50%. 50, 50%. Um, I think we do that through our community crossings and uh, you spend a portion of our local road and street. It's, uh, it's, it's hard to meet. Um, I'm not saying that we'll always meet that 50%. Um, we have struggled, we have um, petitioned as, as the uh, part of the IAICS board of trying to get that even to 60-40. Um, and we have been uh, completely unsuccessful of doing that as a group, but it's something that they will still uh, keep pushing that if they could even trade it, take it down to the 60, 40, it just doesn't seem like um, that um, the parties are willing to support that bill. Thanks. Okay. Anything further before we take a roll call vote to accept this budget, general and undistributed. All right, uh, Ms. Miller. Please call the roll. Councilor Iverson. Oops, yes. Councilor Munson. Yes. Councilor Deckard. Yes. Councilor Wilt. Yes. Councilor Hawk. Yes. Councilor McKim. Yes. Councilor Spoonmore. Yes. Motion passed unanimously. And up next will be the Westside TIFF. Thanks. Council, I move to open for discussion and review fund 4920-0000 Westside TIF with $0 budgeted in personnel supplies and capital and $1,967,635 budgeted in services for a total budget of $1,967,635. Second. Okay. So the only thing that we uh, we put into these two lines is engineering and construction for the 997,000. And then of course the disbursement to the bank for um, the fund. Our, our um, other projects, the um, Curry, Woodyard, Smith uh, project and the Vernal Pike connector project, those have been moved to grant funds because they're federal aid projects. So we will as those continue to build, we'll do cash to cash transfers again and then appropriate into those appropriate lines. Okay. 
Thank you, Ms. Rich. And uh, we'll check with council now. It looks like Mr. McKim has a question or a comment. Yes, and just to <clears throat> kind of uh, make it clear to the public and to my colleagues that this this is the moving out of the engineering and construction line uh, is something that the redevelopment commission typically does. So we put it, we appropriate it all in engineering and construction. And then as the year goes by, the, the redevelopment commission will transfer it to the specific uh, project lines that are required to actually accomplish the projects of the TIF. So that's why if you look in the past and you see the actuals, they'll have all kinds of numbers in the various specific projects. But when we do the budget, we just put it all in engineering and construction. Got it, yeah. Okay, any other questions or comments? Doesn't appear so. So we'll take a roll call vote to accept the Highway Department's Westside TIF budget. Councillor Hawk? Yes. Councillor Munson? Yes. Councillor Iverson? Yes. Councillor McKim? Yes. Councillor Spoonmore? Yes. Councillor Deckard? Yes. Councillor Wilkes? Yes. Motion passed unanimously. Council, I move to open for discussion and review Fund 4921-000046 Corridor TIF with zero dollars in personnel supplies and capital, $330,088 in services for a total budget of $330,088. Second. Okay. Okay. Um, Again, this also goes into our engineering and construction line of 326,688. And then the other portion is part of the TIF annual review that we do uh, around May. All right, thank you. Any questions or discussion? For the 46 quarter TIF budget. All right, seeing none, we'll do a roll call vote to accept it. Councilor Deckard. Yes. Councillor Iverson? Yes. Councillor Spoonmore? Yes. Councillor Munson? Yes. Councillor McCann? Yes. Councillor Wilkes? Yes. Councillor Hawk? Yes. Motion passed unanimously. Council, I move to open for discussion and review Fund 4922-0000 Fullerton Pike TIF with zero dollars in personnel supplies and capital $377,500 in services for a total budget of $377,500. Second. All right. Um, again, this is split out between the uh, TIF annual review and area engineering and construction for $375,000. Um, I will add that we do have um, in our, in the commissioner's 2019 geo bond, they appropriated um, funds for roundabouts um, and the beautification for the roundabouts. So that is one thing that we're working on for the roundabout on the Fullerton Pike area for the Rogers Street. So. Very good. Thank you, Ms. Ridge. Uh, Mr. Kim. I will just say just on the follow up on that comment. Um, I had a, a constituent approach me the other day in the street. Uh, who lives along that area. I was very excited about the beautification and landscaping and was really glad the residents were going to have an opportunity to have some input in the way that looked. And so, yeah, there was a spontaneous, very positive comment from somebody whose comments in the past about that project have, been, have not been so positive. So I think that was definitely a, a very good move to, uh, to allow the, the residents to have some real control over that. Yeah, totally agree. I've, and I've heard of, from a lot of uh, folks in that area as well, just kind of asking questions. And uh, they're all excited from my interpretation. And uh, so this is all good. Ms. Munson? <clears throat> yes, Ms. Ridge. Uh, I hear a lot from constituents about this project too. It's, it's one of the uh, projects that really is of interest to commuters. And can you give us an update on likely uh, timeline for completion? Um, so we're beginning right away acquisition. Um, and this also um, has to do with MPO funding and what year it's allocated. Mm -hmm. I believe it's fiscal year 2020 
for, I believe it's a July 2023 letting date at this point. Um, so that's kind of where we're at. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Decker. Thank you very much. <clears throat> I had a question I'll, and I'll use this as kind of the vehicle to ask it. Just generally on roundabouts, it seems like I hear more about roundabouts before they go in than after roundabouts are in um, as far as complaints or anything. Do you get a lot of feedback on roundabouts, particularly after they're in? No, pro I, I probably agree with you that beforehand we hear a lot of complaints. I think it's just because our community is not used to them. Um, I actually just read an article today on benefits of a roundabout and uh, the crash reductions but between personal injury and fatal crashes and how, how much that's eliminated. Um, but no, um, since we've opened the Rogers Street uh, and then we also have the Profile Parkway um, roundabout open, I have not heard any complaints, knock on wood. That is interesting. Thank you very much. Okay, any further uh, discussion or questions? For Ms. Ridge on the Fullerton Pike TIF budget, seeing none, we'll do a roll call vote to accept it. Councillor McKim? Yes. Councillor Iverson? Yes. Councillor Welts? Yes. Councillor Hawk? Yes. Councillor Deckard? Yes. Councillor Munson? Yes. Councillor Spoonmore? Yes. Motion passed unanimously. I think we got our last one coming up here for highway. Yes, council, I move to open for discussion and review fund 1197-0000 stormwater management. With $823,376 in personnel, $138,500 in supplies, $1,338,750 in services, zero dollars in capital for a total budget of two million three hundred thousand six hundred twenty six dollars second all right tell us about this one Ms. Ridge okay um so <laughs> all the personnel is flatlined as we were instructed to the only type of bumps there there would be is if there was a uh, longevity bump in years of service um we do have a position, um, it's an, an administrative assistant position. We are in the process of going, we just had our first PAC meeting. Uh, it was approved to send to WIST to establish a job classification and a job description for that position. Um, there's many reasons for the need of this uh, position. Um, basically, uh, when we start our, with, when we pass our drainage ordinance, uh, stormwater ordinance this fall is anticipated, we will be, um, taking in fees, uh, permit fees of that nature. That's something that we've never done in the department. Um, right now that, that that is completed by a, an employee from the Highway Motor Vehicle um, Administration. Um, so the duties will increase a lot. It'll be a lot of public interaction um, with the new IDEM permits um, requirements. It's um, this person is gonna be an administrative assistant for the, that portion of the department. Um, let's see, let me see here, official records, we added that. Uh, that is what we use for drug testing. MVR, we're required to keep, um, for CDL purposes, we're required to keep uh, records on every driver that we have. Uh, so we have a company that helps us assist, assist us in that to say, stay federally compliant. We actually have to do that for our Cambridge and our MBH employees. Um, we increased um, fleet maintenance supplies just due to the additional we had earlier in the year. Um, we increased uh, repairs um, due to the additional vehicles and equipment that we have. Uh, training and travel, since we have a stormwater inspector now, we increased that um, due to their requirements to stay in compliance. Um, also with the software, because with our cartograph software and everything, they po pay a portion of those um, software licenses that we have. We also increased it. Um, uh, I'm drawing a blank on what the new program is called that we just purchased for some. It's a it's close to Adobe Reader, but it's a little bit better for play and reading, I believe. Uh, so we just um, purchased those software that software. Um, and... See, we increased 
gas oil and lube due to the additional equipment that we have and the gas prices that had gone up over the past year. And we still have in there the uh, Friends of Lake Monroe um, commitment and I think we have our Stip Road project. Uh, we were allocating 500,000 to that and then Baby Creek 500,000 to that. I did just find out at three o'clock this afternoon that Monroe County was not a recipient of the stormwater improvement plan grants. Um, so we are gonna take the next step and we'll sit in house and, and uh, decide what we're gonna do with those projects, uh, whether it be through bonding um, and see what our, our options are. Um, I was told by the, um, one of our consultants that follows the, the stormwater grants uh, through IFA that they're, they're looking at maybe different uh, funding options for some of these projects that didn't get funded. So I'm waiting to hear back for a little bit further notice on that too. So if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, let's check and see if we have any questions for you. Mr. Deckard, saw your hand first. Oh, I'm sorry. I, that was a misfire on that hand. Let me lower it. Oh, <laughs> Mr. McKinnon. Um, yes, on the uh, administrative assistant position. So that uh, you, you said that did, that has gone to PAC. Mm -hmm. So there was generally, I mean, it was PAC. So they were obviously supportive enough to send it to WIS. So the, really the issue is more what the, what the exact classification is. And so if we approved it in this budget, um, well, when, when, do we, when would we expect to get that uh, information back from WIS? I think it's a couple week turnaround from the past meetings that I've had. I know they're probably still working on other things for um, the county, um, but we kind of based it off another position in the county that we kind of was comparing to that does permit fees and um, uh, public assistance and things like that. That's kind of where we came up with that number from. Okay. And then PAC would also need to meet again to yep. review the recommendation and forward a recommendation on the council. So would it still, would it be possible for that, all that to be done by the time we actually adopt the budget? I, it should. We'll check with Ms. Shell, but I, I, my uh, understanding is that we should have time. Yes. I'm, um, they're going, they had another project going on and she said that they hoped to have it to us uh, before the uh, 1st of October. Because I let them know when our uh, October PAC meeting would be. Okay, great, great. Um, <clears throat> and then also on the, the surveyor salary, I know the surveyor had requested an increase for the elected official uh, in the surveyor's budget and a quarter of that salary is paid in stormwater, but it doesn't look like that amount has been increased in this budget proposal, has it? No, I spoke with um, Tron about that. He was not comfortable with increasing the stormwater because it would have to go to the board, but he wanted to um, just give you guys a heads up of what he was thinking. And then if you did agree with it, then you would have to make that adjustment later in the stormwater. So it has not been included in this budget. Thank you. Yes, and thanks for uh, asking that question, Mr. McKim, because that was kind of relates to the question I had. Um, Ms. Ridge, could you remind me, does, does the Stormwater Board have to approve this budget or is it um, uh, uh, formulated by the Stormwater Board or is this strictly your, uh, your, your budget within your department? No, we take it to the Stormwater Board. Okay, okay, and then what, what was their um their outcome when when they reviewed it they uh, they approved the board or they approved the budget unanimously unanimous okay great mm -hmm. any other questions or uh or discussion on the stormwater management fund budget okay see uh yeah miss hawk sorry I think a lot of this, uh, the revenue will depend on what the city council does tomorrow night. So, mm, yeah. so I'll be watching that. It'll be the best thing ever if they will all just go home early. It'll be a, a blockbuster cats uh, <laughs> meeting tomorrow. I know, we'll have even fewer at our meeting. 
Yeah. <laughs> Ratings week. It'll start at 6.30, but uh, probably be there for a while. Okay. Any other uh, questions or discussion? Seeing none. Um, Ms. Miller, I think we're ready for a roll call vote here to accept the stormwater management fund budget. She had to step away for a moment. Oh, sorry. That's okay. Did you take out that person or no? Yes. Which, what? That you were going to take that out until we voted? Uh, oh. Um, well, I was. We could. I just, uh, I, I didn't make that motion mainly because it sounded like it had already gone through the first level of approval and we can finish the, the last one by the time we do our budget adoption. I mean, we can, so, so we if can always, a, if it doesn't get approved, we can always cut, right? Yes, you can cut up into like uh, at the first reading. Yeah, yeah. We got a minute. I, I, I could go either way. I just thought since it had already been through, you know, we've already expended resources on getting it classified. It sounded like the that pack was already at least favorable to the idea. But it's Mr. Decker, did you have any? I, I was just going to add. I I actually think it should be left in there if 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 you're asking my opinion, simply because I, I I've not heard a strong objection at this point to the notion of it, and I think keeping that as the placeholder at least we do have the option to come back in later remove it pack we'll get that classification back um relatively quickly so to speak so i i just generally yeah unless there's a strong thought otherwise i would leave it there in my opinion i and i would agree with mr deckard as well okay so uh, we, we've got a motion on the floor and uh, we're ready to take a vote. Councilor McKim? Yes. Councilor Munson? Yes. Councilor Wiltz? Yes. Councilor Iverson? Yes. Councilor Hawk? Yes. Councilor Spoonmore? Yes. And Councillor Deckard. Yes. Motion passed unanimous. Okay, thank you, Ms. Shell. So that concludes everything for the Highway Department. Congratulations, Ms. Ridge. All done thank for you. tonight. Yep, thank you. Have a good evening. You too. And up next is Human Resources. Council, I move to open for discussion and review. Fund 1000-0309, General Fund Human Resources. With $147,674 in personnel, $1,000 in supplies, $3,000 in services, $0 in capital for a total budget of $151,674. Second. And we have joining us for the Human Resources Budget, uh, Angie Purdy, Commissioner's Administrator. Welcome, Ms. Purdy. Hi, thank you. Um, I actually what would like to hand this over to Elizabeth. Oh. I, I thought it would be nice for her to have um, some experience with Council. Um, she and Mr. Miller do a fabulous job in, in this kind of a two-man office that is two independent um, positions working like um, well-oiled machines. And um, before we do that, I would like to make a motion if we could change the name of this fund. I guess I don't make the motion, but I would propose um, that we uh, refer to it as employee services. I believe that was um, a term that people thought was more um, yeah. accurate yeah. for the for. Okay, um, yeah, certainly open to that. It would, is this the appropriate time to, to do that or should do we wanna? Yeah, I, I think we can certainly address that at the, at the public hearing and, and have it um, ready to go there if that's okay. Certainly fine with me. I've okay, but yes, thank you for that suggestion and uh, we'll, we'll uh, take that into consideration. Thank you. And then I give it to, I give Elizabeth. Welcome. 
Thank you. Uh, so the human resources slash potentially employee services budget for you to review uh, reflects a minor reduction in the training and travel um, because most opportunities at this point are available virtually. Um, so not requiring a lot of uh, going anywhere to do those opportunities that are available. Um, but other than that, let me know if you have any questions. Okay, very good. Let's see if we have any questions or uh, discussion from the council on the human resources slash employee services budget. Looks pretty, yes, Ms. Hawk. Uh, yes, could you tell me if you are cross-trained with the payroll administrator, so if one of you would become ill or whatever that the other one can just pick up and go? Yes, that is that is true. We, we can both do each other's uh, main job duties. We have our own, um, Jordan calls it his payroll Bible, and I have something similar <laughs> that uh, can be referenced in the event that we were not able to be there. Thank you. They do a really good job. Um, I can't say enough good things about these two. Um, how they work together, how they communicate with each other, how um, when somebody needs, is on vacation, the other one's there and fills in. So um, I think we're, as everybody has talked about this evening, Monroe County employees really are the best. And these two are prime examples. Great. Any other questions or discussion from council? Okay. Um, well, I think we'll, we'll uh, take a roll call vote to accept the budget. Sorry. And uh, yeah, um, Councillor Munson. Yes. Councillor Wilfs. Yes. Councillor Iverson. Yes. Councillor Hawk. Yes. Councillor Spoonmore. Yes. Councillor Deckard. Yes. Councillor McKim. Yes. Motion passed unanimous. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, that will conclude um, the Human Resources Department and emerge, uh, Employee Services. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll now move on to uh, the Board of Commissioners. Council, I move to open for discussion and review fund 1000-0068, general fund commissioners with $496,636 in personnel, $5,000 in supplies, $3,130,124 in, in services, $0 in capital for a total budget of $3,631,760. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second, and we, it looks like we have uh, a number of our uh, county commissioners joining us, and I want to make sure that I recognize everybody. So we have Monroe County Commissioner Julie Thomas, President. Uh, Monroe County Commissioner Lee Jones is joining us. Uh, Commissioner's Administrator Angie Purdy will be here for this as well, too. We have, is Commissioner Githens, will she be joining? I I think she had some other obligations. Okay. okay, so we've got everyone here. Very good. Well, welcome to everybody. Thanks for joining us tonight. Thank you. Um, do you are you ready for me to just go ahead and start? Absolutely, yeah, yeah, whenever you're ready. All right, great, thank you. Um, first of all, uh, the commissioners want to thank um, council for the increase in salary that you guys provided to them last year um, to get their salaries closer to the statewide averages and you did that before contracting although knowing you were going to with Wagner Irwin and Sheely for um, the review of all salaries and um, they also wanted sh it stated that um, as it has been stated numerous times this evening um, the commissioners encourage council to implement the recommendations for for everybody as provided by the, the Wagner Irwin and Sheely um, study that was conducted so Beyond that, um, this particular budget 
is um, it provides for the running of the commissioner's office. It has professional services line, contractual obligations, um, aids in the provision of services such as rural transit, health net, 4-H, and it also has the tax rates for the mental health and disability um, entities. Um, and so this budget reflects an overall increase of $131,000 $484.32, seven, <clears throat> $76,583.32 of that increase is directly related to mental health disabilities and the slight increase in the cost of benefit um, in the personnel line. And then I thought that maybe just um, a point out a couple of the important um, increases that we're talking about, line 31, the other insurance, we've talked about this um, um, at prior occasions with council. Um, this is based on anticipated increased costs as per our provider. Um, staff is working on alternate funding, uh, self-insurance type of, of approach, um, but we don't have those numbers yet. And like our health fund, um, it will need to have a, um, not yet determined, but it will need to have a fund balance for, where we start with anything. So that's why that is um, in there at that level. And then area 10 rural transit, that's the um, line 43. And this is reflecting an increase of $46,000 over the normal uh, amount that is budgeted for rural transit. And um, the reason for that is we won't be using the $30,000 that's appropriated this year um, for rural transit because they, re they benefited from CARES dollars. And um, so what we're gonna do is just let that um, kind of revert as they say um, into the, the cash balance. And um, so we're requesting an additional 46,000 to compensate them um, actually for lost revenue from Ivy Tech um, and also paying for some uh, new dispatching software. So as in prior years, we have attempted to maintain as realistic a budget as possible. So do you have any questions? Yeah, well, thank you very much for uh, presenting that information for us. And we'll see uh, if we have any questions or discussion on this. Mr. McKim, I saw your hand. Yes, uh, and can you talk a little bit more about the, um, the professional services? Just remind us all what, what generally makes that up. Yeah, um, for instance, this year, that one has been used um, for litigation costs that have been associated with, I believe, the Lake Monroe um, issue. Um, there has also been, actually, I have it right here, just a second, I can tell you. Lambert. Uh, yeah, um, we have our... Um, media person who provides um, notices to the through social media in that particular line. Um, but it's also, I'm gonna tell you exactly, because I think it's a it's an important um, it's an important important um, oh yeah capital assets who is also he's that's the um, person that communi communicates with us, the county. Um, regarding events at the state, on the state governmental level. Um, so he's a lobbyist, I believe is the actual term. Um, and we've also paid for some insurance services for our legal department. And um, that's generally it. Right now, it has been mostly um, assisting with um, legal fees that were not sufficient um, in, a, in another budget, as well as um, the, the lobbyist and the, um, the person who can help helps with the media. So that, that's Lambert. Um, he's also the one that came and spoke rather quickly um, about the um, push that we were doing um, to get the notice out for um, masking and vaccinations um, things of that nature. So, so is there, is there anticipation for additional, uh, litigation costs relative to the Lake Monroe suit? Uh, in that, uh, no, 
no, there's no, no, I don't have anything. I mean, I'm not aware of anything, um, but um, the lobbyist is, is, um, is not particularly cheap. I want to say it's like 46,000. Um, we've also paid for some environmental um, services. If, if someone has a concern in a, in a building that gets taken care of out of that particular line. Um, so, and then Lambert, that's not overly expensive um, actually, but we are going to be using, um, try to use more of uh, their services um, in, because of the um, personal or the the public information coordinator. Um, they're not gonna be able to do all of those things. Um, however, they will be able to assist the county with getting our message out better than what we may have been doing. Well, I definitely don't uh, oppose uh, either the, the, the money spent on the lobbyist or uh, additional communication support. I just, you know, I think I've already made my position on the uh, on the litigation clear, and I definitely don't want to be supporting um, uh, ad additional costs on that one, on the, that area. I'm not aware of anything. <clears throat> that would be a legal department question. So when we when we when we're speaking of the uh, Lake Monroe suit, yeah. that's the Houston South. No, no, oh. this the um, the suit with the federal government. I believe it's the DNR. So that is Houston that South. Is, that's that's Houston South. South. Yeah, that's exactly. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Okay. Yeah, I know there's a couple different ways that people <laughs> have been referring to that. Got it. Um, yeah. Mr. Iverson, I believe you are next. Yes, uh, Council, I move to create a new line in this budget in a to be determined uh, 30 account uh, entitled Girls Coding Camp set at $10,000. Second. Second. And if you'd like, I can speak to this a little bit um, or, uh, well, why don't I speak to this a little bit? The Monroe County Women's Commission has been running a STEM camp for 45 area um, young women uh, to teach them coding skills. Uh, and uh, they had been funded by a grant in partnership with Ivy Tech and that grant ran out. The granting organization actually stopped issuing the grant. And so right now the camp is being offered to these 45 girls uh, with pro bono services. And um, the commissioners have very generously uh, allowed for uh, this line to be put in their budget to ensure that this camp continues. So, oh, sorry. Yeah, okay, so um, we, do, we do have a motion and a second. And Mr. McKim, did you have a question? I think Ms. Munson was first. I don't know if her question was on this item or was on the, okay. Okay. Um, so is the idea to just create the line and then allow the commissioners to transfer, say, out of professional services uh, to make that uh, to make that amount up? Commissioner Thomas, it looks like you would like to speak to this. I would prefer an additional uh, amount of money be put in here because our professional services line is is pretty um, threadbare, and we've already had to do some transfers this year um, because of. Uh, the co because we don't have a, uh, somebody to do information services for us and, and uh, with the hiring of the lobbyist, which has proven to be very valuable uh, for the entire county. So we would appreciate having the additional um, funds put into this budget from County General. So how was the $10,000 figure arrived at? That was a grant that the Women's Commission um, worked with partners at Ivy Tech Bloomington uh, to ensure that uh, the students could have access to not only software, but also hardware so that they could learn uh, the different coding techniques that Ivy Tech professors were teaching, as well as um, individuals from Indiana University's CWIT, the Center for Women in Technology. I think I got that right. Uh, I put a link in the chat and you can see the partners there. 
Um, and so uh, the the this year these the the camp is being held at three separate locations. Um, Boys and Girls Club. Uh, I think uh, let me. I've got it pulled up over here. Uh, it's going to be held at the Boys and Girls Club, Edgewood Junior High, and the Mill. And they're going to be capping that at 15 uh, students per session. So that, and you said 45 total uh, kids will, will benefit from that. That's right. And that's a COVID number. Uh, they wanted to cap uh, the number of participants at 15 at each location to try and keep social distancing uh, possible. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Um, Mr. Well, uh, I'll go back to Ms. Munson. Did you have a question related to this motion or still wanted to? To another topic. Okay. Okay. Mr. Decker. Thank you very much. <clears throat> I had a question related to the, the addition of the, the girls coding line. Yep. And um, I guess I, I'll throw this to Councillor Iverson. This, so the, and I'm familiar with this very much because of serving as liaison to the Women's Commission and phenomenal program. Let me ask you this question. Is the eligibility for uh, the girls who would be doing the coding or participating in the great program, that would be a border to border in the county. What, isn't that the case? So whatever That's correct. school district? That's correct. Okay. Any school district uh, allowed to apply and uh, registrations are happening, or I think they actually had to close because they already reached 45 girls. So it's, this is a very popular um, uh, camp that is offered by the Monroe County Women's Commission. Okay. And when we get to the, beyond this, I have a question just generally about this budget, but I'll be quiet. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Um, McKim and then Ms. Hawk. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm totally in support of this program, but I think just throwing this into the commissioner's budget at this point is not a good idea. I think that it's, um, I mean, there there are a ton of similar or not similar, but but pro uh, other programs that I think would be uh, very worthy of our support as well as this one, uh, and we don't I don't know that we have a principled reason for including this and not. A number of other programs. Uh, what about what about paying this out of ARPA? Um, I, there may be some other uh, uh, there may be some other funds that we could possibly uh, pay this out of, but it just kind of sticks out in the commissioner's budget as just kind of as as sort of random. Um, mm -hmm. I said I'd love to, to fund this project. I just I'm not sure this is the right budget to do it in. But yeah, uh, it seems like it kind of hits the sweet spot with ARPA a lot better. And there, there may be some other ideas too. Um, I'm interested in what Councillor Hawk has to say because she may have an idea. Yeah, let's let's hear from Councillor Hawk, and then it looks like uh, Commissioner Thomas has uh, a, a response as well. Sounds like a wonderful thing to do for the youth. And what? revenue do we have that really has a lot of money set in their fund and that's a program for youth services why wouldn't this be mm. an ideal situation now i think you have to be careful that we're not just picking and choosing whoever asks for the money first um you know as councilmember mckim said there might be you know 20 other mm -hmm. wonderful ways to do this um, I don't think putting it in the county commissioner's budget is the right spot for it at all. Um, but I, and that doesn't mean we shouldn't uh, support this and other projects that would help our youth. Because remember that the youth services budget uh, for special purpose does not always have to be <laughs> for the youth that's at there staying mm -hmm. at the shelter. So and, you know, yeah, the, it's just, I think we should just leave our minds open to what other methods yeah. we could use and then and we, who else might need something similar. And we also, um, you know, one of the one of the main goals of the Sophia Travis grant yes. is youth yes. enrichment. And, yes. uh, and I know that yes. there's been a desire to increase funding uh, to 
the Sophia Travis. I don't want to get into, you know, who would be getting that funding and, and who wouldn't, but um, that is a major goal of that particular program as well, too. So uh, I can certainly understand uh, the uh, the ideas that uh, Mr. McKim and, and Ms. Hawk have, have put forth here. Um, but it does sound like that there is some general support and consensus for wanting to see this happen. It just may not, the, the commissioner's budget may not be the right location for it to be uh, paid for. Let's, um, mm. let's see if there's other uh, comments on that. Ms. Thomas, I wanna Thank you. check with Thank her you. for her response. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. I think I think we don't want to get in a situation where we're scrambling for money every year to make this program happen. And I think that's a really important part of this. Um, the other thing I will point out is that ARPA money may work one year, but no. what happens year two, year three, year four, year five? Um, this is really through the Monroe County um, Women's Commission. And we do have a fun line for board and commission support. So the money could go could, could go there. Um, we don't have enough in there now to do it at all. We're always stretched on that budget as it is. Um, so if you didn't wanna have this as a separate line, that would be another location. Um, I, just, I just think using other funding sounds great uh, in theory, but actually making sure that this is funded, we don't wanna have to scramble for this every year. I mean, if this is important enough to do, which we think it is, uh, it would be better just to put this into uh, the budget and make sure it's in there rather than seeing if there's enough in Sophia Travis and maybe not. And if there's enough in ARPA and then ARPA ends and it's just um, it's such an important program. And hopefully someone else will come up and support this with grant money. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Wilts. Yes, thanks. I just wanted to um, comment on it, I just in reaction to a couple of things I just heard, because I do agree that this this program probably doesn't fit in this budget, um, but it's important. And it sounds like the lit special purpose would be ideal in a number of ways. It has money, first of all, being a big one, but this is a youth program. This is clearly a youth program that if it's not overtly stated, um, has has goals that are directly related to improving six outcomes for these girls, you know, and I just, I can't imagine something that wouldn't fit, you know, I think it fits great. But um, the, cons the, the mention of so tr Sophia Travis um, <laughs> might not work simply because it's all, it's a program of the county and we were we were told, you know, that's a little bit complicated. We can't really be giving ourselves grants. Um, and then the other uh, comment um, was that we, you know, maybe can't just like start deciding about random programs and, and deciding to fund them. And my argument would be that this is not random. It's an <clears throat> existing pro program of one of our uh, commissions. It's proven um, in that it's been run and it's been successful. So to me, I, I just, I would definitely um, feel great about maybe tabling this and um, in having a discussion and, and getting it into PS Lit if possible. Yep. That's that's where I am. Yep, special purpose. Uh, yes, <laughs> PS. <laughs> 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 ah. Okay, that's it. Um, Mr. McKim. Yes, uh, I, I, I want to um, thank uh, Councilor Wiltz for a comment about it being um, not random because it comes out of a board and commission. I, that, that's a good, that's a good yeah. principled answer for why, uh, why to support this, uh, this particular program. So thank you for that. I do think though that we ought to table this uh, and see if there's a way mm -hmm. that we can uh, that we can make it work in lit special purpose since we know that is for we know that that's well funded uh, and uh, that would that would address any of the concerns that Commissioner Thomas had about having to scramble for for funding yep. each time. So unless anybody wants to say anything else, I, I move we postpone this item indefinitely. Second. Okay. Anything further? Just thanks, Councillor Hawk, for, for that idea. Yeah. All right, let's take a roll call vote on Mr. McKim's motion. 
to postpone the motion. Councillor Wilkes? Yes. Councillor Iverson? Yes. Mm -hmm. Councillor Munson? Yes. Councillor Spoonmore? Yes. Councillor McKim? Yes. Councillor Hawk? Yes. Councillor Deckard? Yes. Motion passed unanimously. Okay. Now I know Ms. Munson has been waiting to uh, ask a question about the, uh, the commission yes. budget here, so we'll go back to Ms. Munson. Yes, I wish we could have had a, a two-hand symbol because I wanted to uh, bring <laughs> up the issue of, of uh, Sophia Travis grants and uh, two county departments, and I think we've got a good solution coming up. I, I had an entirely different question. It's a very simple one. I wanted to know what uh, SBDC is in line 33043 for $10,000. I just didn't know what SBDC was. Small Business Development Center. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you, because the minute you asked that question, it was like, oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, Thanks they're still going, they're going strong. They're helping a lot of people. Yes, they are. It's very important with this, with the, with the flood impacts, especially. Thank you. All right, Mr. Deckard and then Ms. Hawk. Thank you very much. I had a question about the line on uh, soldier burial that we had in there, and it looked like it went down by about, the request went down by about a thousand. I guess my question is, how often is this utilized? And the other question is, is the word even out there? Do, do these requests come through the v, uh, VSO or how, can you tell me anything more about that? Sure. Uh Yes, our VSO knows about it, um, but so do all of the funeral homes, and that's, they generally come through the funeral home, and it was reduced um, based on just kind of prior, what, what I've seen our actual expenses being, but again, that could completely change next year if we had <laughs> more veterans pass. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Okay, anything further from council? Doesn't appear so. Uh, yes, Ms. Wilkes and then Ms. Oh, I'm sorry, Ms. Hawk and then Ms. Wilkes. Okay, I just wondered how we arrived at the dollar amount for Stone Belt. Is that it's a page or how did you do that? It's, um, it's a mathematical formula using the growth quotient that's provided to us by the DLGF. Um, and so, we use the same one. This is how we've always done it for mental health and um, disabilities. However, mm -hmm. the mental health line, um, the state tells us the maximum that we can give. And so when um, I use the formula using the growth quotient, that was gonna be more than what was approved by the state. So it's a little bit less than using the growth quotient. And the other two do come out exact, 4.3% increase. Yeah. Okay, that's what I was looking at. It's like, thanks. Okay, Ms. Wills. Um, trying to remember what I was going to ask. Oh, could, I think you might've even already mentioned this tonight, but um, there was a line that I'm not seeing. Oh, indirect cost recovery there at the top. What, what is that? That is actually um, a project that's done out of the auditor's office, and I can't remember the name of the provider, but they determine, um, like for grants, what our indirect costs are associated with basically the utilities, um, the physical space um, to, to, to manage um, personnel who will be needing you know, to, to do a grant. Does that make sense? It's, that's interesting. It's like with IU and grants, there's sponsored research and you know there's an indirect rate that's used and they have to be able to justify that indirect rate that's used for grant. It's basically the same thing. There's, there's some, a, cons a contractor that has to actually be hired to do the calculations that allow us to charge that indirect rate to state and federal grants. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Any other questions? 
Any discussion on the commissioner's general fund budget? All right, seeing none, uh, we'll have a roll call vote to accept it. Councillor Iverson? Yes. Councillor Wilkes? Yes. Councillor Munson? Yes. Councillor Spoonmore? Yes. Councillor McKim? Yes. Councillor Hawk? Yes. Councillor Deckard? Yes. Motion passed unanimously. Thank you. Council, I move to open for discussion and review fund 1000-0161, general fund county buildings commissioners. Personal ca personnel category, 260, uh, $260,480. Supplies category, $73,500. Services category, $1,834,637, capital zero, for a total budget of $2,168,617. Second. All right. All right. Um, okay, Council, this budget supports all of our maintenance staff and our contractual staff that is associated with our building. It provides for the payment of the majority of our buildings, utilities, trash, and <clears throat> cleaning, and um, the general service contracts. Like for instance, for the um, for our HVAC systems, um, for the water treatment. Um, it's a water treatment, chemical water treatment that's associated with our um, with our HVAC systems, and so this. Um, this budget has an overall increase of $215,000, 215,257 and one cent. Um, this increase is reflected um, through the following. Um, our maintenance, security and cleaning lines as our contractor is um, moving to pay a min minimum wage of $15 an hour. They're experiencing a lot of um, trouble like everybody else um, we've heard from tonight talk about um, getting labor, getting workers. Uh, the utilities, although they're on track this year um, to uh, meet what we're going to, what we had appropriated in 2021, um, it's reasonable to presume at least a slight increase for 2022. Trash, uh, the trash was increased as we actually added the Johnson Harbor building to the recycling list. And um, I think that's about it, it for this particular fund. Do you have any questions? Let's check and see here. Do we have any questions from council? Any discussion? Yes, Mr. Decker. I had a question on the, the justice building and management for that. That went up significantly. And I guess my question is that does not cover any of the, the jail portion. That's just everything else. Am I saying that right? No, not really. Um, that actually, that is, that, that provides for the, um, that, I've got a dog that needs out, sorry. Um, Cause this happens when we're the last one. Um, that actually provides for the, um, or for the um, security, for the cleaning, um, for the repair. It's the same people that work in the jail. They, they do the repairs that are necessary in the jail and they do the repairs in any other part of the justice building. Um, it did go up significantly, um, <clears throat> excuse me. And I might be able to get it down a little bit, but we are working on um, the contracts so that we can actually get it up, get them um, so that they can meet their $15 minimum um, wage requirement. Thank you. And so are some of those security provisions in response to what uh, the clerk had mentioned as related to combative? That's a payers. Folks coming in, or is, that, is, is any of that going towards that or just curious I and mean, it is kind of a sizable increase was that some like a response to her no, I'm, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not aware of what you're speaking of from the clerk um she had mentioned in her budget review meeting that they had been experiencing a, a higher <clears throat> uh, incidence of combative I think was her terminology and aggressive agitated or aggressive um uh, clients that, that come into uh, to her office and had mentioned that the need for some potential 
additional security. Mm. And I was just, since I saw the increase there, I didn't know if that was perhaps a response to that. No, this is just payment for the secure the the security, there's an armed guard and then there's an unarmed guard. The bailiffs work a little bit of the of the um, of the entryway, but for the most part, the bailiffs are in the courtrooms. They're there to um, facilitate the courtroom process. Um, so this includes um, the security in the on the ju justice building, and we have somebody there 24/7. Okay. So there's always somebody in that um, facility, and then. Um, it provides for cleaning staff and it provides for general maintenance staff. And going back to Mr. Deckard's question, um, if there's a problem in the jail, they're the guys that go in and, and fix it. Um, I, I, it actually calls for, um, this, because we never had it really broken out and I like to have things broken out, um, which I'm, we're still working on, but um, this actually will, allows for a specific jail um, maintenance person. However, they're having a hard time keeping anybody in that spot. Um, so um, it, you know, it, it's, a, it's a difficult um, job for them to do. It's a, a, an old, older building and it seems to be having more and more problems. Yeah, okay. Any other questions, comments? Ms. Hawk, was that your hand? I'm sorry. Okay, okay. I think we're ready for a roll call vote. Councilor Hawk. Yes. Councilor Stoonmore? Yes. Councilor McKim? Yes. Councilor Deckard? Yes. Councilor Iverson? Yes. Councilor Welts? Yes. Councilor Munson? Yes. Motion passed unanimously. Okay, and up. Sorry, um, we're moving on. Sorry. Uh, Council, I move to open for discussion and review fund 1000-0307 general fund fleet with $61,694 in personnel. Zero dollars in supplies and capital, and thirty thousand two hundred dollars in services for a total budget of ninety-one thousand eight hundred ninety-four dollars. Second. Okay. All right, and I've also I think Greg might be on this particular um, call. Um, if you have any, if you have any questions for him, um, however, this this. This is kind of a new, um, it's not a new fund or, or location for us. We've always had it, but it does support um, our new fleet manager, fleet and building manager, and it pays 75% of their salary. And um, it um, is generally, um, it threw me off because it's not on the same schedule as how I got my, my budget, so sorry. Um, and so this, this fund generally just provides for the maintenance and repair of, um, of the non-sheriff vehicles. We did reduce it by $1,000 um, on the maintenance lines, um, but it is still an increase, but that's because of the staffing. Okay. Um... I'm not seeing the, the decrease. Where is that? What line are those? It's one, it was like, um, it is line. It's corner maintenance. Um, second to the last line. Um, just reduced by one. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Any, any questions from council? Any discussion? On this? Yes, Ms. Welts. And then I Ms. Munson after that. Sorry. Well, I mean, just because this is a um, relatively new position. Um, and I, I actually would like to hear from Mr. Crone about how it's going and, um, you know, just a little update. Certainly. Um, so far it's been going very well. It's been a little bit of a transition, getting everything figured out with all the projects that were up in arms whenever I come in through the various departments. 
Uh, obviously, everybody's aware of the vehicle shortage and everything associated with that, which has drove park supply shortages, costs to go up, things of that nature. So I've been trying to navigate that system and find the best options for the county as far as not only purchasing vehicles, but maintaining the fleet that we have that is aging. So uh, with those challenges presented and then the buildings flooding that we've had during that June storm, uh, had a lot going on, but it's, uh, it's been going very well and I appreciate the opportunity to do it. Great, thank you. Yes, thank you. Uh, Ms. Munson. Yes, I'm um, curious. You said uh, the salary line was 75%, Ms. Purdy, is that correct? Because usually they're they're listed as split. Is there a split between um, one fund and another fund? It's it's the time that is because the other fund is the public safety lit. Um, uh huh. We have to look at how much time is actually spent on public safety okay. uh, expenses, and so that's why there's twenty the twenty five percent. The other twenty five percent is in the um, Public safety fund. Okay, I just wanted to know what that was because we're used to seeing that in the budget. But thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Michelle, if we scroll, is that noted on there anywhere in the spreadsheet or should be? Should it be. Is. If you look at his line at the very top, yeah, um, FTE employee counts, and then zero point seven five. And then there's usually like a, a little note there on the off to the right. side in one of the other columns over there. But um, we can we can certainly get that added, Ms. Munson. Thanks for noticing that. Do we have any other questions? Any discussion? All right, let's uh, let's take a roll call vote to accept mm. the uh, commissioner's fleet general fund budget. Councilor Decker. Yes. Councilor McCann. Yes. Councillor Iverson? Yes. Councillor Spinmore? Yes. Councillor Munson? Yes. Councillor Hawk? Yes. Councillor Wilts? Yes. Motion passed unanimously. Yeah. I've lost my place and now I don't Let, know. What what's special budget. purpose? Thank you. Kind of a smaller one. Yeah, I just gotta find it on my paper here. Want me to jump in, Kate? Kate? Yeah, no, oh, yeah. All right, Council, I move to open for discussion and review fund 1114-0068, special purpose commissioners in the personnel category, zero dollars. In the supplies category, zero dollars. In the services category, $20,000. In the capital category, $15,000. For a total budget of $35,000. Second. All right, Lit okay. special purpose budget. Yes, thank you. This is um, the youth services budget. And this fund um, allows for the commissioners to pay the utilities that are so associated specifically with this building and also pays for the building repairs. <clears throat> There's actually a, um, a decrease in this fund of $208. Um, despite looking at the increase in the utilities line, um, that is what I did, right? And um, yes. Um, and the reason for that is we're, it's getting a little close at this time of the year. So we, I might be asking for a category transfer um, later on in, in 21. Okay. Let's see if we have any uh, questions or comments. Anything from council? Yes, Ms. Hawk. Um, what about gas and so forth for the um, vehicles. Okay, this this is not for the, this has nothing for the vehicles and the vehicles is a whole currently they don't we don't have um, a line for the maintenance of the youth services vehicle. 
They do, however, have it already in their budget. Okay. Um, so, and then they, they manage the fuel for theirs. We don't pay fuel for anything other than the vehicles that we actually have, um, like the commissioner's vehicles. And um, that's fine. The, actually, I would rather it not come out of here anyway. I just want to make sure it was covered someplace. Yeah. Yep. Okay, thank you. Any other questions or comments from the council? Okay, let's take a roll call vote to accept the lit special purpose budget. Councillor McKen? Yes. Councillor Deckard? Yes. Councillor Wiltz? Yes. Councillor Hawk? Yes. Councillor Iverson? Yes. Councillor Spinmore? Yes. Councillor Munson? Yes. Motion passed unanimously. Thank you. Council, I move to open for discussion and review fund 1138-0000 cumulative capital development with $619,963 in personnel, $0 in supplies, $955,000 in services, $2,297,062 in capital for a total budget of $3,872,025. Second. All right, um, as you guys know, this fund uh, supports the majority of our technical services departments, county software, uh, software maintenance contracts, um, provides for the payment of the employee garage. And um, it's also providing match money for the Bicentennial Trail. And this is also the fund in which um, all of the sheriff vehicles are purchased and any body armor that may be needed by, by the sheriff's department. So this fund does have, is reflecting an increase of $202,374. Okay. Uh, any, any questions? Who would like to get started? Okay. Could you uh, talk about the sheriff vehicle uh, increase and what are we expecting there? Sure, um, we actually increased it to, actually doubled it. Um, and that was to get us in line with the recommendations that had come about um, earlier this year when um, we were looking at enterprise as before we got our fleet and building manager. Um, and what this does is, is gets us on a, um, and Greg can actually speak to this better than I can because he's the one doing it, but it's going to allow us to um, rotate the vehicles out like every four years, although we're not even close to that at this point in time, but it's just starting to get that, um, that process in place so that we can um, get out a vehicle um, earlier and get a better price for it when, when we are finished with it and then get them into another vehicle um, that's newer. They're, they're more efficient. They have less problems. Um, it's all of that. Uh, uh, Mr. McKim. Um, yes, sorry. I, I, I was listening to that answer there and I just lost my, uh, my track. Oh, the building repair and maintenance. So, it does look like that's going down a little bit. Um, but what, is, what, all, what, what sorts of things does that include? Is that just various uh, ad hoc maintenance contracts on the non-justice buildings? Is that? And it includes the justice building because the, the cost, okay, so the, the maintenance that you may have, that you might be referencing from the building fund, that's contractual and staffing, um, you know, cleaning, that kind of thing. That's the yes. ASI contract, right? Yes, yeah. Okay. Um, and then what this is, is when we need to buy, buy new doors um, or we need to replace a wall, um, that kind of thing. Does that um, help? Or when there's um, damage to a building, um, an exterior or interior, and we can just go ahead and, and fix it. Okay, so it's more than just routine maintenance then? Yes. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. 
Mr. Iverson. Hey, Ms. Purdy, uh, I had a question about the, the increase in the airport development line. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when Mr. Laverty was talking with us a couple nights ago, uh, he was talking a lot about some of the FAA required um, changes. And, and I was wondering when the FAA requires changes, does it come to this, this line? Uh, when, does it, when do you decide when it comes to the airport budget or this budget? Um, that's generally dep kind of depends on Carlos um, when he reaches out to to me when they have a project. Um, this one, the, the increase in this particular line for next year is is directly related to um, costs that are not covered by the FFA, FAA um, and the current projects that they're hoping to do um, at least start this year. I, I'm not sure where it's at, but it's the one with the lights, the issues with the lights out at the airport. And there's a component of it that cannot be covered um, by the FF, FAA because it was part of um, a 2015 sinkhole project. And so they can't use those funds again for that. So that's where this money's coming from. Um, and that was his high estimate of what might be needed. Yeah, he said it was a big project and it certainly looks like it. Yeah, but it's gonna be really good. All right, well, thank it's you. It's gonna be good for the airport, good for our community. The guys coming in, um, I don't know if he told you because at one point they had to stop flights coming in because the lights weren't working and can't have that for <laughs> airplanes coming in. Mr. Decker. I, I hope I haven't missed this. I'm sorry if it's repetitive. Can you tell me about the special projects line and what that might entail? Sure. Um, well, like for instance, special projects is for those things that have not, we've not really thought about, but would fit under the um, guidelines of the cumulative capital funds use. And so like for instance, this year we transferred 132,000 out of that line and into the share of vehicle line so we could go ahead and get started on their um, on their replacement of vehicles. And then the, and it was 200, I think, it's 200 this year also. So um, 132 went to um, the share of vehicles and then um, the, what we will use the, the other or what we what okay so what will happen is that fiber cut that occurred we will pay it from there um and there was something else i thought that we had but um that, that would most likely get paid from that particular line yeah so, so like the the sorry the fiber cut huh? which would what what's a cost estimate on that do we even have an idea <laughs> We do, and Mr. Evans has told me, I wanna say it's like, it was amazing um, what we were able to get done and in such a short period of time. And I wanna say it's less than $20,000. Okay. It's either less than $20,000 or it's 28,000. Um, let me see if I can find his email. I can no, tell you. You don't, no need to be, I was just curious about that. And and thanks for explanation on this line. No problem. Okay, Mr. McKim and then Ms. Hawk. Yeah, so if we're talking about the fiber cut, just, just to make it clear, it wasn't just the repair, it was actually burying the fiber at a lower level mm -hmm. so that it wouldn't, it yeah, wouldn't so easily yeah. be. Yeah, but, yeah, it was actually two, there was two parts. So the initial repair, so we could get back up and, and being functional. And then the, um, the need to have it lowered to the appropriate height and not duct tape. I don't know if you guys are aware of that, but there was duct tape involved. <laughs> Thank you. Not... All right, any other questions? Yeah, Ms. Hawk. Um, what is the balance of that parking garage debt? Oh, I have no idea, but I can tell you, um, I don't know what the balance is, but I can tell you when the last payments are. Um, the last payment is January 31st, 2030, in the sum of $34,332. Uh, 
and the uh, a second payment, that final payment of $205,542.41 is um, scheduled for January 31st, 2040. I actually wrote those down. 2040. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I would like to see an entire breakdown of what we've paid so far and what, and it, is there like some kind of penalty to try to pay it off early or? I don't know. Um, I will, I will talk to legal and see if they know. Um, the auditor should be able to get this for us, at least the, you know, the amount that's been paid and what's yeah. outstanding. If, um, if I remember correctly, that was, that was specifically something that we insured was not part of this contract, but we want to verify that with legal. Yeah. yeah we, right. we I mean, to begin with, to be clear to council members who were not here at the time, they did not bring that to county council for approval. They just did it. So now we have to deal with this 480,000 every year. Uh, not to say we shouldn't have done it, but it would have been real nice had we been a part of the financial decision. So. Okay, yeah, Mr. McKim. Yeah, just to follow up on that, I guess it it, it is a fair point. We ought to have a, a discussion at some point, not not today, but a discussion at some point about the costs of that, of the, the remainder of the financing on that garage. What, what we're paying in, in carrying costs, what, what we could pay in uh, early termination fees, if there are any, and figure out if there are any other co more cost-effective ways to continue our, or to, to refinance. So yeah, I, I, I think that would be really useful to get, have a discussion about all that information. Yeah. Hmm. Perhaps we can add that to our, uh, our next quarterly uh, discussion with the commissioners. And maybe the answer is this is the cheapest, you know, the cheapest way to finance, and it may well mm -hmm. be. I think it's something we should look at. Yeah. Okay. Good suggestions. Thank you, uh, Ms. Hawk and Mr. McKim. Ms. Wilkes. Yes. Thanks. Um, I'm wondering. I think that there are so many questions on this budget because you have the most interesting titles for your lines. And they just beg to be like, what do you mean by that? <laughs> um, well, do ask. I hope we can tell you. <laughs> um, but uh, I'm just wondering, <clears throat> the line that says ADA compliance, it's a steady budget. And then, um, but I'm not sure what, is, what my note next to it says it's a placeholder. And I'm not sure why or what that would be. Can you explain? I don't, I don't know why it would say placeholder, um, but the ADA, that's the name of the, I, we don't name the, the accounts, um, but that's the name that it has. And it's for if we have a building that needs some kind of ADA repair or um, something specific to ADA, then we can use that particular line so that we can show um, what we have done um, in response to any problems that have been brought up or um, things that we've recognized and, and corrected as we've gone along. Hmm. Would, this, would this be related to the courthouse project that we had discussed last year? Is that what would pay for that? Um, no. Um, not enough. Uh -huh. It's not enough. <laughs> Yeah, it's not enough to cover that, but this was this is more like. Um, oh, that was the bond. That's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah, that was the bond. Um, this is actually, like for instance, the um, the doors weren't opening. Um, that failed at the health building, the the handicap. Yeah. Door, and we can re we can replace it out of that line. The costs that are incurred. Um, it's um, correcting maybe. Um, when a drinking fountain goes out, instead of putting in something just like what's there and they're not ADA compliant, we can then replace it with a unit that, fact, that actually meets ADA um, requirements. That's sort of a, 
it's a troublesome name for a line, in my opinion, simply because every repair we do is legally obligated to be compliant. That, okay. Um, that's actually, I don't know that that's actually a factual statement. Um, <laughs> because a lot of repairs that we do have nothing to do with ADA. You know, the wall, if we have to repair a wall, if we have to repair a window. Um, this is specific to our, um, we have an ADA transition plan. Um, so this is specific to projects that, you know, might that come up out of that particular um, meeting group, but also for, it's truly used for specifically correcting something that wasn't ADA compliant and making it compliant. And, that, and that's what I wanted to point out is that we do need to track the spending that we have on ADA compliance um, yeah. for ourselves. And so it helps to have it in a separate line. And we do have a list now that we've had a study done, a review done of our buildings. We have a list of projects. Some are huge, uh, some are doable. And so we're, we're tackling that list with this funding. Mm -hmm. Why do we have to track the spending on it? We, we have to track it because people are going to want to know. Um, there, there is a, and I think that actually as part of our transition plan, it states that we are going to fund um, projects and, I, and, and we have to be able to show what we have done and what we haven't done. I believe Again, I have, didn't look at the transition plan, but I believe it is part of our transition plan in that we'd be able to show the corrections and the costs incurred and that we're putting money into it. There is a, and this might be from the federal side, they want to see that people are actually making a point of fixing these things. Yeah. Okay. Mr. Iverson. Uh, so I have a question on uh, line 40001 equipment. Yes. The, the explanation note is that it's for sheriff's equipment slash, I think, that, armor. Yeah, it's for the, uh, um, that was the note I wrote for myself. That's, um, that's just uh, for their body armor. Okay, so that does not include ammunition or no. um, body cameras or anything of that sort. Just it's just body armor. Just body armor. Okay. And and that um, that was just a number that I pulled from the air. Um, so I think that this year we've paid five thousand out of that line. So just so you know. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, any other questions or uh, any discussion on this, Mr. McKim? I guess I just want to make it clear to everybody that that's uh, because these are all in the same category, at least most of them, most of them in the same category. The commissioners can transfer within category all they want and, and clearly do. Um, and so to some degree, these categories really are sort of placeholders um, and they you know, the, the, the specifics for each of these placeholders are going to change each day or each year, depending on the actual need. So that's why, I, you know, the, I, I know for some of the, some of you who are, are new, it, it seems kind of vague. And, uh, and there, there's a reason for that, that these really are fairly vague placeholders. Um, and, and the commissioners, like I said, have that ability to, to transfer among them as, as the needs emerge within the general authorization. I mean, the, the fund, you know, the law that, that enables QMCAP has a specific set of things that it can be used for. So it can't be used for absolutely anything. There's a specific list of, I don't know, 14 things that it can be used for. You know, one of the odd ones is that it can be used for, for IT salaries. And it can't be used for any other salaries, but it can be used for IT salaries. 
highways. Mm -hmm. uh, it can be used for police vehicles, but it can't mm -hmm. be used for highway vehicles. So they're right. just there. So, but within that general, within the law, the, the strictures of the law, um, we have tended to be, you know, fairly treated those categories in a fairly broad manner. So that, that's really what you're seeing here. Thank you. It's very helpful. Any other questions? Any comments? All right. Let's um, let's take a roll call vote to accept the cumulative capital development uh, budget. Councillor Munson. Yes. Councillor Hawk. Yes. Councillor Deckard. Yes. Councillor McKim. Yes. Councillor Wilkes. Yes. Councillor Spoonmore. Yes. Councillor Iverson. Yes. Motion passed unanimously. Thank you. Council, I move to open for discussion and review fund 1170-0307 public safety lit fleet with $20,566 in personnel, $0 in supplies and capital, $87,700 in services for a total budget of $108,266. Second. Okay, this, this budget um, provides for the maintenance costs of the sheriff, animal management and jail vehicles. Um, I do have concern based on um, conversations with Greg earlier today um, that th this may not be sufficient given the increased um, costs for parts, but um, this is where we're at at this point in time, and I think it's a good place to start. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Who would like to get started with questions? As much as we have any any questions or comments, the public safety lit fund. Ms. Purdy, yeah. Sorry, I was just going to say, I just re realized this is also, um, and maybe Kim would want to note this, um, that this fund is pays the 25% of um, fleet and building managers' salary. Yeah. Right there, 25%. And the other one was 40 some thousand or? What, how much was the other one? I forget how much was. The other one is um, 43,462. Okay. Any other questions? All right. If there are none, we'll do a roll call vote to accept the public safety lit fund Commissioner's budget. Councillor Spoonmore? Yes. Councillor Iverson? Yes. Councillor Munson? Yes. Councillor McKim? Yes. Councillor Deckard? Yes. Councillor Hawk? Yes. Councillor Wilkes? Yes. Motion passed unanimously. Uh, I believe Ms. Shell had something to say. Yeah. As I'm going through these, um, we have a commissioner's office public safety lit that I did not include, and um, mm -hmm. on on the uh, on the script, um, it's not even on the agenda. So we need to add that. I missed that one. So we can either, uh, so we can do it at the end if you like. Let's do it right now while we're on it. Yeah. Do we need to amend an agenda? Well, we do that for ourselves. It hurts. That to me would be a Margie question, but I, I can't answer that. You um, you can amend your agenda again. Um, there's no legal requirement that you amend it as long as your activities are done in public and in your minutes reflect your activities. 
but if you'd like to as a you know just an internal procedural matter you can certainly one of you can move to add this to the agenda um how about if i just move that we open the commissioner's public safety lit fund for review discussion and i believe that fund number is the 1170-0068 with oh golly it's such tiny print sorry make y'all tiny thank you with um right there sorry zero dollars in everything except for supplies is that right? Contractual. Contractual, yeah. sorry. <laughs> With and one hundred sixty-five thousand dollars in contractual for a total budget of one hundred sixty-five thousand dollars. Whoops. Are we both looking at the same thing? Yeah. Should be. One hundred sixty-five thousand. One hundred sixty-five thousand, right? Right there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That says law enforcement equipment. It, that is correct. It's all part of the contractual. And, or, and yeah. the contractual line. She, that yeah, line. actually, I think Kate did say contractual, but it is actually a four, four thousand line. Capital. It's an equipment, yeah, law enforcement. Oh, it's capital. Yeah, it's capital. I would like to amend my motion to change the category from contractual to capital. Second. Okay. We have a motion and a second. And uh, Ms. Birdie, if you wanna give us sure. some background on this. Yeah, this, this particular um, fund, again, um, earlier this year, I came to you um, and, and actually so did um, Eric, Mr. Evans. And um, you guys approved the purchase of um, some jail, uh, security items, and then also there was the radios and the MDTs, the mobile data terminals for the deputies and reserves. And the radios have an ongoing um, maintenance contract. And we stated that at the time and told you that we'd be back, or I would be back um, with the um, yearly uh, maintenance for the equipment. So that's what you're looking at right now. But then maybe it should be under contractual. It's it's actually we we actually paid for the equipment and everything out of that line. Um, but you could move it, I guess. Yeah, it's just for a maintenance contract, right? Yeah. I don't know, Margie. Uh... What do you think? That's that seems like a contractual to me. Right, it is. For zero, uh, oh, three categories. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. yeah the for, question is, you know, it's a maintenance. It's a software maintenance kind of, um, and just radio maintenance mm -hmm. um, agreement. So, it fits. Does it fit more under contractual, which is at the thirties, or is currently in an equipment line? Um, which is a I, capital line. I think um, if it's a if you're if it's a maintenance co maintenance contract, I would think that would typically go in a thirty category. Yeah, right. I think so too. I would agree. Okay, you had it right to begin with. You Even did. <laughs> Trust Kate. <laughs> you did. I don't know about that. Um, so I'd like to um re amend my motion. <laughs> to correct the category to contractual for a total budget of $165,000. Are Second. there any objections to that? Okay, I, just, I think just, we'll accept that. Yeah. Just to clarify, that's uh, in that line. Um, sorry, Kim just moved too far over to the- Sorry, hang on. But is it 30006? Is that what it is? Yeah. Contractual, yeah. Okay, so that that's what we mean, right? That's what we mean. Yeah, I think we're all good here. Yeah. Who's got Who's got questions or comments? I think we've straightened out the contractual versus capital capital issue. Any other discussion on this? No. 
Thank you. It came so out. Now, let's, let's take a, we've, we've had enough, I think already. Uh, let's do a roll call vote to accept this budget. Councillor Iverson? Yes. Councillor Wilts? Yes. Councillor McKim? Yes. Councillor Hawk? Yes. Councillor Spoonmore? Yes. Councillor Deckard? Yes. Councillor Munson? Yes. Motion passed unanimously. I think we're finally getting toward the finish line here with uh, the last and final budget for the evening. Council, I move to open for discussion and review fund 2502-0000 cable franchise user fees. With zero budgeted in personnel supplies and capital, $395,451 budgeted in services for a total budget of $395,000. $451. Second. All okay. right. Yeah. Um, so this, this budget is showing an increase of $21,950. And um, I've got one cent in there. Um, and the majority of that increase is actually um, attributed to the $15,000 in telephone repair. That um, I had kind of mentioned um, earlier when um, Mr. Evans was talking, and I believe Councillor Hawk had questions regarding um, the, the cost for telephones, um, our, our cell phones, and, and what have you for the county. And he is he was concerned that this year um, there is insufficient funds. Um, he's going to be running tight, I believe, in his county general fund. And so instead of putting it in county general, we thought we'll put it in here because it has been here before. Um, we transferred it out at one point in time um, when this fund it is it is receiving less revenues, um, but it can still handle this, this budget that's been presented to it at this point in time. Okay, thank you. Mr. McKim, if you'd like to start. Yes, uh, do we know the, the fund balance for, for this fund right now? Can you gonna ask me? I meant to do that before I left the office, but I didn't. Um, Kim, can you look that up for me? Yep, I have it. Oh. 387,000, 300, 387, 377. Okay. Yeah, and there, there's a, um, there's a $104,000 that's coming um, because I noticed that we hadn't received um, Revenue from Comcast. We've, we've only received two payments. We should add three. I have three by now, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, um, talked with Bree last night, and um, by this morning, we've got it all figured out. They they sent a check apparently, but it hasn't been cashed, so they're just going to cancel that and send us another one. And it's for 104. Uh, it's a little less than what we've been getting. So, like the second payment, I believe, was 108 something. And the third payment was also 108. It's, it's actually went up a little bit. Um, so Comcast is, is still doing well for us. Um, AT&T is not. But. Right. It, yeah, the Comcast is really the only video franchise anymore that's paying the, the fee. Yeah. I, was, I was looking at the FSG report that looks at the, um, the revenue change from 2019 to 2020. Oh. And cable franchise went it went down from 471 to 444, and now it sounds like we're just I mean if we're talking about about 108 thousand per quarter, we're just a hair under that. So it's really it's going down, but not a lot. Um, mm -hmm. As long as Comcast keeps uh, you know keeps yeah. going strong, it, it does seem like it's not really declining as much as I think at one time I think we thought that that fund was just going to drop to zero. And it just hasn't. The, the revenue, Comcast has really kept it up, kept it afloat for quite a while. So, I mean, it, it sounds like even just with the projected revenue, the, we ought to be able to support the budget. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Mr. McKim. Any other questions? Ms. Hawk? Uh, yes, the uh, contract with CATS, they cover just what the commissioners asked them to cover. Uh, I found that out in the past. So 
I'm going to give one more plea that we start covering um, the other budgets that we that we vote on. And I am not seeing that on CATS. Maybe it's on there and I'm just missing it. But the Monroe County Fire District, because that's a huge part. And we, you know, we have the controlling vote of that. And we need to make sure that the public understands what's going on and we understand what's going on. Here, here. I think that's a very good idea. And I, they, they won't do it unless, unless we commissioners ask them. I think I've missed what the question is or what, what's not happening. Cats covering the Monroe Fire Protection District, and apparently the commissioners have to request that. Okay. What, like make it part of a contract? Is that, yeah. No, yeah. no. But the contract <laughs> with the commissioners, that's probably why, um, you know, they're the ones that sign it. Um, I think that if, you know, I think that the commissioners are on this call and you guys are here, if you want cats to do that, um, well, here, here, I do. I'm not, I don't understand why the fire district hasn't asked them. Maybe they're waiting for us they're, to. Maybe they're on there and I've missed it entirely. It's probably because of where they hold their meetings. So let's, um, let's just talk to them. It's, it's, I, I don't know that this is a good venue to do this. So we'll work on it. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Any other uh, any other questions? All right, seeing none. Ms. Miller, let's do our final roll call for the evening to accept the cable franchise user fees budget. Councillor Wilkes, yes. Councillor Iverson, yes. Councillor Hawk, yes. Councillor Spinmore, yes. Councillor Decker, yes. Councillor Munson, yes. Councillor McCann. Yes. Motion passed unanimously. Thank you. Thank you all. Have a good evening. You too. All right. Council, that was a lot of heavy lifting tonight with those budgets. So thanks mm -hmm. uh, for everything. Um, we'll see if there's any uh, comments or remarks the council members like to make before we recess uh, for the evening. Do, are there any comments from council? All right, it doesn't look like it. So we are going to recess until our final uh, budget review meeting, uh, which will take place tomorrow, Wednesday, September 15, 2021 at 5 p.m. That'll happen here on Zoom. So until then, we are recessed. Have a great evening, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Good night.